Yawn for Nancy on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hello. Kyle Pilkington. Steve, you got any other toilet related <laughs> anecdotes? Rick, my life is just full of toilet trauma. Yeah. And I, Carl, you may not realise this, but uh, a while back I used to host, this is bizarre, I used to host a radio show on the BBC World Service, right? Now, you, if you want someone who's, who's the voice of integrity, the voice of intelligence, the voice of a nation, you're going to come to me. That's yeah. obvious. And I was broadcasting to, and they've got listeners of something like 50, 60 million people around the world. It's mental, the listenership of the World Service. And I used to host this show with someone. It's a big place, Steve. The world? Yeah. You're absolutely right. And uh, anyway, so I had to I had to be into uh, Bush House where they broadcast from, 10 o'clock every Friday morning to broadcast around the world to 50 million people, right? And one week, uh, I went to the toilet in my house, right? Everyone had left. I got there a bit late. I just got up a bit late. Already against me. The clock was already against me. Had to be there at 10 o'clock, broadcast around the world. And we've got two toilets in our house, downstairs one, right? And the door had already been a bit dodgy. It was one of those doors where you had to give it a bit of a kick because you went in. It was, getting a bit, it was getting a bit tight. I don't know what the wood was expanding or something. You know, I'm in there. And same thing again happens. No toilet paper. I think, oh, God, I'm going to have to somehow kind of make it up. Why don't you check first? I normally do, Rick. I normally do. It's just on a certain occasions when I'm bleary-eyed or something, I just, I forget. Or occasionally I forget. Normally I do check. Right. And um, you've got to bear in mind that it's not like this is happening every week. This is over the course of many years that sure. these incidents have acc accumulated. So um, you've condensed them for the purposes of this anecdote. Sure. Yeah. Yes. And sure. Um, great. You're, you're, you're just brilliant to keep the, keeping the pace up of an anecdote there. Rick. You've just drawn in. I don't know where I am now. Anyway, oh, oh, no, I know where I'm. I'm trapped in a toilet oh, with no God. toilet paper. Yeah. That's where I am. And I'm thinking maybe I peel off some of the wallpaper, you know, things like that. But there's nothing I can do. I got to go upstairs. Well, exactly, but I'm going to have to go upstairs and find Toilet a paper, <laughs> was there any? <laughs> there wasn't, sorry. There wasn't? Oh. I'm going to have to go upstairs and maybe find a notepad or something like that. Oh. And uh, so I try the door, right? The door's wedged, and I'm pulling on the door, and I can't get the door open. It's just like it won't come open. And it's already, and I knew it was going to come to this at some point. Like, this is like, the clock's ticking. I'm trying to pull the door open, try to run my ankles again. And I'm thinking, well, what I could do is I could open the window, I suppose, and like, try and climb out, but... Not really, because I got the trousers on the ankles. And that's or if it was fun. raining, just stick your ass out, <laughs> two birds with one stone. Sadly, it was a beautiful day, Rick. It's, I call it the World Bee Day. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, um, so what I'm thinking is, well, wonder. I've got my mobile phone in there, luckily, because it's in my pocket. I'm thinking well, maybe I could phone. I would seriously Kleenex. Think, maybe I'll phone <laughs> the fire brigade. By this point, I mean, it just dried. <laughs> No, it hadn't. It was. Hold it was, on. Was that little puppy not around? Because no. sometimes you can call that. It's got a little bit wrapped round it. Listen. Uh, or just use the puppy issue. itself. There's 50 million people around the world going to yeah. hear my voice in like yeah. 30 minutes. Exactly. And Where's Steve? He's not allowed in the toilet again, is he? <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. So um, so, so I'm thinking about phoning the fire brigade, and I'm thinking sure. like, if I do that, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be the first call that goes straight on the speakerphone. Yeah. For like the entire. Fire brigade service everywhere. with a butch hero carrying you down over his shoulders with your trousers around your ankles. <laughs> exactly. Can I just not pull him up? No, you've got to be learned a total lesson. Yeah, but I imagine the idea of a phone up and going, uh, "Hello there, I'm uh, yeah, a bit of, I'm trapped in a room in my house." Oh yeah, which one is it? Oh, it's quite don't small. It's quite <laughs> small. <laughs> is it? Yeah. yeah. It's not the toilet, is it? Because we don't want to come up and rescue someone who, who's trapped in the toilet. Which no. service do you require? <laughs> Paper. <laughs> So, um, so I, I think I can't find the fire brigade, the clock's ticking. So then I think, I think one of my housemates is still in the house, but still asleep. So I phone the house number, right, phone rings and rings and rings for ages, and eventually he answers the phone, <laughs> right, gets out of bed, answers the phone, yeah, hi, it's Steve, all right, what's wrong? I'm what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Oh, I didn't wait. No, no. What are you doing? Oh, just in the toilet. I'm just downstairs in the toilet. Oh, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, I'm well, I've finished what I'm. Have, have you got any <laughs> toilet paper? Any bog roll? Yeah. So he had to um, kind of scrape together a few bits of paper, you know, and sort of tin foil or whatever he could find yeah. in the house. A cactus. Come, come down oh no! Pass it f underneath the door, right? And, now I, and then he, I say, "Can you move away from the door while I? Because I don't want you to hear me as I'm, you know, wiping the." And so you he didn't, didn't say that. Yeah, well, I didn't want him to. You know, that's, what, that's what, embarrassing. Sorry, what, what that's you, embarrassing. What were you white yeah, with? with? Not tumbleweed. What do you mean? What <laughs> no, noise? I know what you mean. Yeah. No, exactly. Right. So, um, so then I say, right, can you smash? Why the was he hovering? <laughs> Why didn't he want to walk away? <laughs> Will you keep your what was it <laughs> outside with a glass to his ear? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thankfully, there was there was there was a window in the door, but it was frosted glass. Right. You could just see my my semi-naked body moving around, and. um... So eventually I said to him, look, listen, I'm going to need you to sort of kick the door in. He said, well, I don't want to kick the door in because you're going to have to pay for it, aren't we? I go, yeah, but I've got to go to the World Service. I got, Well, yeah. And he was a lovely man. He's the weakest man 
you've ever you've ever come across. It's like you if there's one person you don't want to have to throw their body weight against the door, it was him. It's like he'll snap before the door will. So he's smashing against. This the door. sounds like a fetish to me, though. He went in there, and there you were naked with lots of toilet paper, and you go, "Oh, you've broken the door down," and there I am naked <laughs> <laughs> again. Oh, you've rumbled me, Rick. <laughs> I wish I'd not told that embarrassing story on the radio. <laughs> like it wasn't embarrassing enough, you just got to make it slightly more seedy. Oh, <laughs> uh, so did he? Did, did he get it? Down? He did it, yeah. And I got to the World Service with like minutes to spare. Oh, and uh, interestingly, I told that story to 50 million people around the world. Yeah. Did they understand? I what, think what, so. What, I mean, is that a bit of a problem when you're on the World Service, like, thinking of things that everyone can understand? Yes. Because you can't It's a bit like when talking yeah. to you, Carl. Yeah, exactly, Carl. I think you're on thin ice there, <laughs> worrying about people understanding what you're saying. No, but you can't talk about stuff that's on the telly and that, because some people say, well, we haven't even got a telly here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're listening to XFM 104.9. Play a record. Nirvana, all apologies on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, Steve, I met up with. I know it's forbidden, usually. Mm, I don't know why uh, you're Let me just expl it. explain to the uh, listener. Um, me and Steve have got a little bit of a pact. We're not allowed to talk to Carl during the week because he comes out with too much dynamite and we want it to be fresh and it's, it's just unfair. And if he sees us laughing, he, he clams up a little bit because he, he knows something's wrong with his head. So, um, I was in a pub and, uh, Carl called, he returned a call, I called you earlier, and I said, oh, I'm just across the road, I'll come over. And, uh, he came over and we had a conversation and, uh, I kept saying, no, save it, and I can't remember half the things he was saying, but I do remember one thing he said. He said that the human eye never grows. It's the, he said, he said, unlike your ears and nose that keeps growing all your life, he says the human eye never grows. Now there's a little bit of, he says, now you look at a baby, it's got big eyes. It's got the same size eyes as it will have. When, when, when a baby's never... born, everyone always goes, oh, look at its eyes, don't they? Because that's like the main feature. Yes. They're quite big. <laughs> they what? don't grow, they don't get any smaller, they stay the same size. What, you mean once you become an adult, you've the same size no. eyes? No. As soon as you come out of the womb, <laughs> your eyes, the size they are, as a little baby, they stay the same size and so the sockets. Okay. And I said, I pointed out to him, right, you know, I said, if that was true, Steve Merchant, when he was a baby, with these eyes he's got now, would look like a hammerhead shark. All right, calm down. <laughs> you don't want to go <laughs> lay into the eyes. Do you know right? what I mean? Just to prove my point. I didn't uh, laugh. Good. When he said that. Respect. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Well, my... <laughs> I've got the eyes of the window to the soul. <laughs> and mine are, they happen to be enormous French plate windows. glass windows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, you know, but nevertheless, no, no, they're beautiful. But, many but, people but, find them beautiful. Yeah, they're great, yeah, many people find them beautiful. Um, yeah. but, uh, Do you know they don't have kneecaps either? My eyes, or? What? Ba babies. <laughs> when, when they're born, they, do, they don't get kneecaps until they're about two. <laughs> they don't get kneecaps? Is that true? Yeah. And also, uh, what are you um, talking about? Well, that's, but it's, isn't it like a, isn't it a little bone in, it's part of the, the Well, no, the, but all the, 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 the you've got lots more, lot more bones when you're born than Yeah, you've got 300, 300 when you're born, then 205 when you're an adult. Yeah, they're all fused, don't they? Do they? The head's got to be all soft to come out. Right. Um, as we said earlier, you know. I would know, I'm a shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so God. So what did you say when he said about my eyes being huge? Okay, get off said, it. That, I said that isn't nice, considering yeah. he's not here. Yeah, so I wait until he's there when I slug him off. Yeah. Very well, no, nice one, Carl. You're an honourable man. <laughs> oh, well, there's, I know, you see, the thing is, right, that made me think that it might be a little bit of truth in this. There is as well, is that... the, the ear thing. <laughs> have you seen that with old That's men true, who have yeah. really long ears? Yeah. And big noses? Yeah. You mean do, that, they, do they eat buns and uh, walk around in the jungle, these, these old men? You mean that the ears and the nose carry on growing? Yeah, yeah they do, that's true. That's true, it's cartilage. Yeah, but not like, it's not like sort of Pinocchio. <laughs> no, no, after you're dead, you leave a body lying around, he's got a huge elephant really? type ears. Really? left him long enough? Four foot nose, that's Incredible. what, yeah. Um, that's no, remarkable. But, but, you see, the, it's about the focal, um, uh, length in, in your eye, you see, because it's a, it's like a big lens. So it would make sense that, that they couldn't change that much. Hmm. Um, because an owl, do you know why an owl turns its head round? Sort of like 180 degrees. No. Because it, it can't move its eyes, because the eyes take up the whole, it's the biggest eye in the animal kingdom. The eyes take up the whole of its skull. Really? That, yeah, yeah, and it has to move its, yeah. Has it got a brain in there as well? It's got a brain in there, yeah, above the eye, yeah. When I say the whole of the skull. I'm, Quite, yeah. There's yeah. also some space for the brain. What I meant is the, 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 the two diameters of the eye is the, is the diameter of the. You've lost me there with diameters. And you didn't like maths, did you? No, don't like maths. Never understood it. Couldn't yeah. get to grips with maths. I don't know about you, Carl. Did you do maths, maths, Carl? 
Now, how did you do your exams on the maths? <laughs> did you do that? Well, see, yeah. I bet yours was rather like my theory, which is why do you need to figure it all out when you've got a calculator? Exactly. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. You're right. And I agree. Well, let's play a record, and afterwards I'm going to be testing you on your homework this week, Carl. Mm. Um, could we do, uh, White Van Man first? We could do, oh, just to, you no, know, they've got no, to know what, to what they're people. dealing with, yeah. Um, Carl's homework was to read all about, um, as you know, Che Guevara. Absolutely. Uh, uh, last week, he did well on Rasputin, didn't he? Did very well on Rasputin. Yeah, uh, perhaps with flying marks there. Uh, so, uh, um, let's, let's have a bit of Wu-Tang, shall we? So let's have White yeah. Van oh. Man. Yeah. White Van Carl. Nice. Yeah. Wu-Tang Clan, there, Steve. XFM 104.9, which is a very easy with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now, I just, uh... Remind me someone else, um, Carl's in the week. I know it's forbidden to talk to him, but we're, we're, I'll tell you this. He was talking, he was very excited about the Friends Reunited. He was a bit nervous at first, wasn't he, last week? But he was really getting into it. Um, and, uh, in the pub he was talking to him about people, and he said, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd never go on a reunion, though. He said, I'd never, never do that. What, a school what? reunion? Yeah, and he, said, he wouldn't want to see anyone. And I went, well, I, I said, I said, wouldn't you want to see those two lads with the big heads and the webbed hands? Oh, yeah, these were people you went to school with, weren't they? Yeah. Well, I didn't knock about with them. They were in the class. What were they called? Ah, uh, freaks. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. And, uh, he said, no, I wouldn't want to see them. He said, because what could you say? Oh, you haven't changed much. Right. Mm. And he went, he said, and they wouldn't go anyway, would they? I said, why? He went, well, they didn't have any friends. Right. And I said, well, weren't they friends with each other? And he went, no. That would have been too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> like, they passed it and went, no. <laughs> I know it's tempting, but let's not. Everyone would think that's just what we were going to do. <laughs> yeah. Let's not do it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they didn't even hang around with each other. No. See, I must say, in my in my head, I've got something like it's like a some sort of extra thing from Blake Seven that they're like some sort of you know lagoon monster, but they just had slightly oversized heads, did they? See, does your head grow? Your hmm. eyes don't. Does your head? Because maybe they've got to a point now that it's all sort of caught up with each other. <laughs> Well, at the time, the, the eyes were very small and the head was huge. <laughs> uh, just a very big head. And yeah. The, I mean, the fingers aren't going to change, you know, that's not... They had not webbed funny. fingers? It was like the penguin in Batman. <laughs> really? Are you sure? No, honestly. Are you sure they weren't wearing mittens? No, seriously. <laughs> yeah, they were, it wasn't home economics. They weren't getting some out of the oven, a very hot dish, were they? Every time you saw them. <laughs> but why were there two, but they weren't related and they weren't friends? I don't know, I suppose it's like asthma and that, innit? Some kids have it. <laughs> and, and it just was a coincidence. Yeah, but that was quite a common thing. Webbed hands, Carl. Yeah. I don't know, you don't think of it, do you, when you're a kid? You just sort of... Oh, when, yeah, you, <laughs> when you first see them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there goes the frog, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Carl, look, let's have, um, <laughs> let's have a little quick session of White Van Man. For those that don't listen to the show regularly, uh, The Sun, as you may know, has a section called White Van Man where uh, a member of the public gets <laughs> asked their opinions on the uh, week's big uh, political and social hot potatoes. Carl, we just thought uh, it would be fun if you answered some of the uh, questions. It's not so much questions, it's just your views, really, on these big, these big news stories. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics, and for he... What? He was a ski, he was a skier. Right. And he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. But what, I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? <laughs> Why? Because all you do yeah. is balance. But imagine it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you have yeah, to. It's not, it's not going to help you. Is no, it? it's, it's just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it? With skiing. Yeah, but it's often to do with your uh, athleticism, isn't it? It's no, but you... like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's not. It's not going <laughs> to help them. You, yeah, you sit there and you go with the flow. Yeah. And you could try I, could, and you hold could I say? Could I say the, the, the drugs Apparently he was taking? That's his defense, probably, the, it, pro he wasn't. He probably wasn't jacking up. H or, you know, dropping a few E's or getting stoned, he was probably taking more sort of, uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed to him just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting doesn't... off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> doesn't mean that, yeah. does it? He wasn't, yeah, he <laughs> wasn't off his nut. Yeah, it? yeah. Uh, you have, you have, uh, tested you, you're pissed out your head. But why doesn't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's not going to help me out. But it is, isn't it? Because, uh, performance enhancing drugs know, what, do. Wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Look, hey, look at me, yeah? I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the light's glinting off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, right, no, keep concentrating. Right. Some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build up swimmers muscle. Swimmers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers. Runners. Example, runners, yeah. Not, not only do they help build muscle, Right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance-wise, yeah. sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff. Right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? 
Right. So again, he, was, he wasn't on a bomb would that help before. You? What? Why would that help you when you? All you've got to do is balance on skis. <laughs> Not uh, when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's a and lot to do with you know your body and no, your legs. No, it's practice, isn't it? It's like if you, if, if you've skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, do you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I ate this bit. I ate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Um, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they, saying, you know, she's daft and that, but... <laughs> don't make you! She's... <laughs> I, I think they're all right, honestly. Yeah, You know, right. she's all right. I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um... Would you uh, agree that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer. He doesn't need to be... Do you know what I mean? It's like me. Yeah. Like, you know, all right, I only got an E in history. Sure. But knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, good luck to him, and he's done well out of it, and it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember, though, um, when, I was, when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station, and he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now, yeah. back then, but he was stood there, and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying, did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh, but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when you sort of go, sure I went to school, it's not the one with the big head. Yeah. But I do recognise him, then my girlfriend got off the train, and I said, I'm sure I know him. She said, yeah, it's David Beckham. And I was oh, so close to Oh, thank God for your girlfriend. Does she, does she get an awful lot of scrapes, does she? She <laughs> does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what about the fact that, uh, the pension crisis... Sure. ...is gonna force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? You might have to carry on working into your 70s before you I, can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. <laughs> um, because you see a lot of old people who look bored. Okay. <laughs> and I honestly think if you, you keep do. if you keep your brain busy, yeah, you'll live longer. Yeah. It's only when you actually shut down, right, that that's when your body sort of dies because it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. <sighs> if you have a day off, you just feel worse. You'll mope about at home. Doesn't do you any good. What about whatsoever. where where do you draw the line there? Though? What if you say lose a finger, pop into work? Um, depends if if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? <laughs> you're not going to type as many words, but you, you'll do more at work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this. It's the one no. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And, you know, I mean. Okay. Um, and finally. Uh, that, you see, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the pres it's the prime minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. <sighs> All right. <laughs> okay. And uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned uh, Will Young singing both tracks uh, on the number one slot, and uh, consequently he wasn't on there at all? They had to show the video. The first time anyone's ever made this demand. He wants to sing both the A and uh, B side. Well, he can't. It's, a, it's that, double A. Yeah. Double A side. That's well, what he wanted. That, that is now it works, is it? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And the thing is, which one? I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? Isn't it yes, like one of yes. the best? So it doesn't really matter what it does, because people have got it, they can listen to what song they want at home. It doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. Yes. And it, it's just annoyed me now. I don't, it's... Who's annoyed you? Th this, th just what goes on in the world. I'll tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I, I, it's better being in my little world. If that's what people are talking about on the streets, and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? You're I think right. you're right, Carl. I think you're Jeez. right. Shall I, shall I play a lovely song for you? Because you're getting all stressed now, aren't you? I've not had a good day. No, I know. We tell you about it later. It's not a good day. Well, I'm going to play um, uh, a, a Neil Young track here of Harvest. It's uh, Alabama. It's, it's it's beautiful. And this is for Carl. Athlete, West Side. I still like that one. It's a good track. Yeah, okay. I was worried it was a bit novelty. It would go off very quickly. But it's good. No, really it's not bad at all. On I XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Mays, with me Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier... A certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the ins and outs of it are. I don't <laughs> know why. No, if I, if I came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if you, there was people shooting at us and everything, it was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. 
There was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's this well, gun's not clean? Well, I just cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, uh, they were, they were oh, shiny. It's fine, he was well, he's got to do that, it's more His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't you know, know what, what the internet of it are, but, um. Uh, is it, what you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into, that's what I do, you got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, like, the Falklands or, you know, the Gobs, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? I go, you hit the back, yes? Will it be horrible? <laughs> it, it will be horrible, <laughs> yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything. I go, right, I'm not going to go. And I go, <laughs> okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. should be fine, yeah. Just like go, does anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then, well, we won't send anyone <laughs> then. <laughs> my, um, brother, my brother went into the army, right, because, um, because he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. And then, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about 80, 81? Right. And he joined back in like 81 or something. And uh, he, 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 I don't know, he was in Aldershot or something. Oh, yeah. And uh, he wrote back to my mum saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote. <laughs> well, bad time to join, that's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's all right. Dear Dad, yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway. Uh, go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sh sergeant, and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined, and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like, saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to my, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go, which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what her? do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, it's... Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now, listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her, because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I've promised her I'll say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertaining in this phone call? Probably because he was new. What? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, you're, you're I mean the sergeant. Uh, I don't know, so, maybe they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do it! But you that's ludicrous! Uh, I love it, that. Oh, uh, going over the top. Built no, in. I've, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this, is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be in order. Did, they, you, because I notice it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's good. my mum says don't yeah. go. Yeah. You didn't write this yourself. No, no, you? my mum wrote this. Okay. You definitely wrote this yourself. Your excuse. You're going to have to do, um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> if, if he was needed he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort. They sort of said, oh. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh, no. I was so where are the, the other soldiers going around just going, wah? <laughs> Wilkinton. <laughs> no, he ended up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for, um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> What? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl, you've Honest made that. Honest to God. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your, your brother's a genius. I love this, I love this. First of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, go and let him up, and he goes, oh God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? Um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is... No, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of hags? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I did, was Did your mum phone out and say, let him off? <laughs> 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 no, let him off this time. Can he... Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about 11 years. But ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off. But I think if you're a certain type of person, it's, it's good for it you. It didn't straight him either. How did <laughs> it? No. He was going down the shops in the tank. He was shagging someone no, behind but their No, it's yeah. really weird. It's like back then, he was like a proper adult and he had a house and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he I, hasn't I, got the I, house. Seriously, I haven't seen him for about 11 or 12 years. Oh, so I so it always start, uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the- uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down. Because it's just too stressful. <laughs> <laughs>
Hides, main offender, XFM 104.9. Wow. It's that time in the show where I test Carl on his, uh... Homework. Yeah, for the week. History. The re-education of Carl Pilkington. As you know, we found out last week that he'd, uh, taken one GCSE and he'd got an E and it was history. Do you know, Steve, I haven't told you this, went shopping on Sunday, buy some new jeans. I was in a shop, saw an old lad who I hadn't seen for about two and a half years. Went, you alright mate, how are you doing? First thing he said, sorry to hear about your exam results. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> Had he listened to the show or someone had yeah, just told him? Yeah, he was on a train listening to it on the way to a football match or something. He knew that you were on the show, did he? He was a yeah. regular listener. First thing he said. Wow. So sorry about your exam results. Haven't people have been coming up to you in the station going, you yeah, right, right. You, do you want to talk about it or? God. I know. Well, well, you did take it pretty badly for a 29 year old man. Just a bit of a shock because it annoyed me that. I it wasn't a shock. You no. knew you, you hadn't got any. No, I thought I'd have got a bit more than that. I wasn't expecting, you know... But you weren't, you didn't even think you took history, so that must have been a bonus. Yeah, that's what my girlfriend said. Yeah. So, well, well, didn't she say something quite philosophical, which was like, you know, you didn't even have an E this morning? Yeah, she said yesterday, you know, <laughs> you, you didn't have anything <laughs> yeah. Yeah. today. Exactly. Which was good. Yeah. Mm. But, anyway. Anyway, okay then, well, you were tested on, uh, Che Guevara. Right, Carl. We should just, hang on, we should just remind people what happened, because last This is a little series, I've got a lot of these little books, right, they're about, like, um, two and a half inches long by about, you know, two inches wide, those tiny little things you see in the, sort of, on the front counter of Waterstones or Smiths, and it's, uh, The Life and Times, a series of all the great, all the greats in history. Uh, last week you read about Rasputin, he wasn't impressed. No. Uh, this, this week- This book's a little bit thicker than the Rasputin one. No, it's the same, I think, was it? Maybe the writing's So you're smaller. writing or something. Um, but, okay, Shag Shag Guevara. Who was Shag Guevara? Just, just, uh, now, you learnt to pronounce it, right? And how do you remember? You told me in the week how you remembered to, to what his name was. Shay is like Shake, and his, his surname is like Guitar. Right. Shavara. Okay. Um, but anyway. <laughs> right, um. Tell us what you know and I'll, I'll, we'll ask. Right, first of all, um, his, his name isn't really Shay. Right. It was something else, and Shay means buddy okay. in, uh, wherever he's, from, uh, Argentina. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? Yeah. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Right, so anyway, he was born, and he was, uh... By the way, Carl's not reading this from a book now. This is all out of his own head. This is I just... not pre-planned notes. No, this is, this is, I mean, it's I know it helped. sounds written, but he's just yeah. Right, here on we this. go, here we go. Go on. Um, he was born, um... He, he had bad asthma as a kid. Right. Which I thought was quite interesting because they didn't have cars and that back then and that's what they're blaming asthma on these days. The bad, the bad build up of traffic and that. Well they so, did have cars, Carl. Not as many as they have now. Okay. Um, so that was, that was something I picked up early yeah. in yeah. the story. He uh, had asthma, yeah. His dad, his dad was into poli- he wasn't a politician or anything but he was, you know, they were into the politics. Sure. So he sort of grew up around a family who was into, you know, watching the news and that and keeping up to date on yep, what's going on yep. in the world. So that sort of rubbed off on him. He went to school, he was doing stuff on medicine. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to be a doctor, or he thought he did. Yeah. Um, anyway, he, he learned really quick. He did like, uh, six months work in about three months. So he Impressive. could have some time off school or something. Right. So he, he took that time off. Yeah. And went to travel South America with his mate. Okay. On a motorbike. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, he saw all this bad going on in the world and he thought, oh, this, this is bad, this. Yeah. You know, I, I could so, do something here, I could yeah. change this, make it a nicer place to live. So he, um, he said, what I'm gonna do is, uh, join a gang right. that sort of, uh, is against the, uh, like the, like the government. Yeah. Right. All right. Am I right so far? Yeah. You're doing very well. Right, and and the woman who he met, who was like running this gang, is a woman called Ilda, who he later married. All right. And Ilda introduced him to Castro. Right. Who was like the, the like the head cheese of the gang. Right. Who wanted to change things. Okay. And um, so uh, she said like this is this is uh, I think his real name was Eng Engelbert or something like that. Ernesto. What? Ernesto. Ernesto. She said, this is Ernesto, he does medicine, should have him in our, in our sort of army, yeah. so when there's injuries and that, he can, he can make people better. Yeah. So he said, yeah, alright then. 
So he joined the gang and they went like, uh, went, went to sort of, I'm chopping it down a bit. This no, 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 sure, 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 sure. you're, 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 you know, you're condensing it's this. It's not, it's not in real time. No. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so they go It feels the, like it. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I just wanted to ask you to ask me questions. Well, listen, let me cut to the, let's cut to the chase then. So, okay. um, obviously well, he made his name as part of the, uh, Cuban Revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know what date that was? Oh, about, uh, no, I don't. Okay. And, uh, obviously, so, uh, he, he was, he, he had a big involvement in that. Yeah. Um, well, what, where, where, which country was he, um, was he caught? He was caught in Bolivia. Yeah. Uh, how did he die? They executed him. Yeah. He shot him, and his last words before he died, right, the, the guy's there with the gun. Huh. And he, w he wasn't scared. He didn't, he wasn't like crying or anything. He said to the bloke with the gun, he said, go on, shoot me. Uh, be a man. Yeah. He said. Yep. And they shot him. And yeah. did, did it tell you what happened to him after that, his dead body? No, but Suzanne was telling me about this the other night. She said there's more to it than that. They stuck it in a... In a in a glass coffin, didn't yeah, they? So, well, yeah. well, no, but before that, they cut off his hands and his oh, feet, feet and sent them to. Uh, no, 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 and that, because they and they buried them in different places, and then they buried the body. I think they might have sent the hands to chat to uh, Fidel, but uh, they they buried him in an unmarked grave because they didn't want anyone to um, start using his his grave or his tomb as a place martyrdom. of martyrdom. But of course, that just made him even more of a martyr because no one knew where he was buried, so it just meant that he was yeah, even but that more wouldn't of work a, like, anyway. Because if they did find out, that's more places people can go and sort of grieve. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If Genius. you've got all these different graves... What, with different parts of his body? Well, you've got a foot over there and it's like, well, you know, oh, God. His head over there. Thanks for sure. what you're doing. <laughs> you tease of genius. Yeah. That's oh, true. So, so all in all, all so in all, essentially, what's your summary of Che? <laughs> yeah, uh, you like him more than Rasputin, don't you? A lot better bloke than Rasputin. I can understand why he, he gets one of those little books. Um, well worth knowing about and, um, good bloke. Did a lot, you know. Crammed a lot into his short life. Yeah. But, um, yeah, interesting bloke. But um, just just on the subject of uh, Che Guevara, um, Steve called me up in the week because he was going through the, the duty log. We love the complaints on the BBC duty log, and someone had written in because one of the Blue Peter presenters was wearing a Che Guevara T-shirt. And what did the bloke say? Yeah, this is a, a series of people can phone in and, and write and uh, complain to the BBC about different things. Why would you complain about wearing something? Well, this is no, this it? was the thing. Is you complaining about the best? One, I mean, there's been some amazing complaints. Oh, there's in there. some great ones. The, the best one, my favourite, my favourite one that wasn't a complaint but was actually just someone had to phone in was what an excellent edition of Kilroy this morning. <laughs> yeah, which but I there's lots of that. It's things like Esther was superb. Yeah. Woman call yeah. one. Woman called. Uh, there yeah. was a brilliant one I remember once, which was um, uh, Robbie Williams was wearing a Nike T-shirt on top of the pops last night. Product placement on the BBC. It's just all so things that. Like yeah. But anyway, this was this was one phone call. There was a, a presenter on Blue Peter. She was wearing a T-shirt with Che Guevara's face on it. Right. And um, someone had written in and said, uh, or someone had phoned in and said, very worried to see uh, a presenter wearing uh, Che Guevara's face on a T-shirt. Are you trying to turn my children into communist revolutionaries? Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine who's thinking that, who's bothering to phone up with that information, Carl. Yeah. Who knows what they're going to say about this show? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you've been championing the work of uh, Communist Revolution. Luckily, luckily, no one listening to this show can either write or operate a phone. <laughs> so I think we're pretty safe. So, so thumbs up, Che Guevara. Yeah. Well done to Carl there. Yeah, no, I uh, thought he was even brilliant. Right, but the thing yeah, is, that, you, that, you keep saying to us, you don't understand why history is interesting, and yet you're clearly interested by that. You, you remember that Carl, information. Do you, yeah, I've got another, yeah. I've got, I've got a few in the series. Uh, can I give you your next week's homework? Go on. There you go. Oh. Read it out. Hitler. <laughs> Hitler. The life and times of Hitler. 1889 to 1945. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know much about him? What, what, what was the significance of that last date? Why did he, what, what was that last date, Carl? Why do you think he died in 1945? End of the war. Yeah. <laughs> which I'm interested in. So this. Yeah. This will have stuff about Anderson shelters and that. <laughs> It might, it might not be covered in the Hitler, um, biography, the Anderson Shelter, but... Just I mean, check if there's a special Anderson, uh, <laughs> chapter. Anderson <laughs> Shelter chapter. Yeah, I'll look forward to this. Yeah, yeah. Be, yeah. be interesting. Uh, Powdered Egg is page four. Yeah. Excellent. Well, right. we're gonna play a hip-hop. Yeah, we're it's time for a hip-hop hooray. Um, people are absolutely in love with this feature, Rick, as you well know, and I know you're somewhat jealous of it. Yeah. Uh, this week, I know that Outcast are currently on the playlist, aren't they, with their new single, Whole of the World, is that yeah. all? The Whole World? Anyway, this is a track, uh, from the big compilation, Outcast. Uh, it's just a sort of compilation of all their greatest hits. And uh, this is a good one, it's called Rosa Parks. Play it, Carl. From their greatest hits album, uh, that's Outcast, and a track called Rosa Parks. Like it, like it. Yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Now, we just had a call, uh, from someone, uh, impressed by Carl, and Carl's very pleased because this guy has actually done a PhD on Che Guevara. 
So in theory, whatever subject he chose, in theory, he's probably one of the experts in the world on this particular field. Now, hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, what's your name? My name's David. David, now, you, now where did you do your PhD? Did it at UCL. Did it at UCL? Mild, mild college. Yeah. And what was the actual title of the PhD? It was uh, Che Guevara's influence on class struggle in uh, Europe in the 60s. And what did you think of Carl's performance? I his, thought he his... did really, really well. The only thing, I'd never heard those last words before. So, so Carl <laughs> actually knows something you don't know. Yeah, possibly. Although <laughs> you presumably not take that as verified information. You'd probably, you probably wouldn't take everything Carl said uh, as gospel. You'd probably look it up yourself, would you? I probably would have a look, did, yeah. Did you know about baby's eyes? Sorry? Did you know that baby's eyes don't grow? I didn't know that. You see, that's why you shouldn't take yeah. things Carl says as, uh, as gospel. Because it, it come out with something, you know, you know, vaguely uh, intelligent, and then say, "Did you know about baby's eyes don't grow?" Um, any uh, any questions that you'd want to test Carl on? Any uh, thoughts? Anything he missed there on the uh, history of Che Guevara? I think he did really well, and uh, I, I, I think I think he should be congratulated. What? No, because because Carl has problems with understanding why people are interested in history, and well, even though he's been reading these books, he keeps saying, "Why does anyone care about history? Why is it important?" What would you say to uh, Carl? I think he should maybe then look at who Che Guevara did influence and why he still influences people today. Yeah. No. Well, he, well, he knows that he influenced um, Citizen Smith, uh, and he knows that if McDonald's ever wanted to swap uh, Ronald McDonald for Che Guevara, it would cost him an awful lot of money. <laughs> so he is trying to p apply it to the modern world. He's, he is having a go. Well, maybe you should think like why Rage Against the Machine have him on, on their t-shirts. Good point, oh. Carl. Why do you think of that? Why do you think they have him on the t-shirts, Carl? I, th I don't know. Maybe that's. That was a design of the t-shirt. Maybe they wanted another t-shirt. Maybe they wanted Ronald any, McDonald. But didn't have any in. <laughs> sure. And they said, oh, we'll have that one there then. <laughs> well, thanks very much, um, Dave. Just to, before you go, do, do you think Carl would be an interesting subject for a PhD? Yeah, very much so, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. um, well, if, if you know, if you know... Well, hopefully one day busy. you'll become a professor and you can maybe set that as some uh, coursework. Do, yeah. Carl Pilkington. Imagine that. Cheers, Dave. I'm having an MA in Carl Pilkington. <laughs> thanks very much, Dave. Okay, bye. Cheers, thanks bye. Lot, That's good. My teachers never did that. What encouraged you in that never, way? Never said well done. So really? Yeah. But you never showed up. Yeah, they, they, no, they, you they have to be in the same room. They were really. just saying, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but Mrs. Matthews, me, me head teacher. Oh, let's sure. not lay into Matthews again. She's oh, not getting it. Not Matty Matthews. Said, not not Grimble Matty Matthews. I'd never be a high flyer. D d if she could see you now. That she, what she say? She, you'll never be a high she, flyer. She said that to me, mum and dad, on, really? on a parents' evening. <laughs> What and that was after I'd played the drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> she clearly didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> R.E.M. with Orange Cross on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly three, only 20 minutes to go. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve and Carl. Carl, what did you point? What did you point to me then? Just then, reminded me. Go on. O Orange Crush. Do you know we were talking the other night about contraceptives? Uh, no, you said to me. Uh, I've got to do lots of homework. You look up how they used, in the olden days, how they used to use elephant dung as a contraceptive. <laughs> and I went, what? And he went, no, look up, you make me give me those things. I said, I don't know, was it they put, when you're running around with dung on the end of your knob, no woman really wants to go near it. Is that how it worked? And he went, come on, you give me things to do. If you've just written a PhD on how to use elephant dung as a contraceptive, please get in touch. And I'll give actually, the number in a minute. It's not elephant, it was crocodile. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? But, um, yeah, orange Sorry, crush. no, you can't, no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Back. <coughs> what do you mean, it was crocodile dung? What, how do they use crocodile dung as a contraceptive? I don't know. Right, go on, Orange Crush, yeah. So Orange Crush, um, what it was, I, I was trying to look up that, that thing about, um, crocodile stuff, mm. using it, and, um, I came up with another one saying that they used to use a lemon, <laughs> sort of shaped, right? And the, um, put it, put it on, and the citric, so the, um... Citric acid. Citric acid in it kill would kill the sperm. Right. So they would, sorry, they would wear the lemon on the end of the knob. Was that erotic? <laughs> it worked. Listen, I'll try anything, Carl, mate. It <laughs> works. Yeah, yeah. If the ladies like that. I mean, does it ha could it be anything? Could it be like, uh, you know, a melon? Kumquat? Yeah, maybe. In my, in my case. What's those hairy ones? Yeah. Anyway, that uh, just reminded me when it, or in, Orange Crush. Well, thanks very much for that, Carl. It's, uh, and that, I didn't even ask him to no, 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 research no, no, that. No. Just... So Orange Crush reminded you of the lemon contraceptive? Mm. Okay. Johnny Good? 
You could use it as a little lemon squeezer, couldn't you? It could be like a novelty lemon squeezer. You just stand in the kitchen, <laughs> and then when someone wants to just come along and go, yeah. <laughs> on the end of your... Did yeah. you make this uh, lemonade yourself? Uh, yes, I, I did. It tastes funny. <laughs> it tastes funny. Uh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, you, do you, would you, Carl, this is a quick question to you, would you ever sort of find yourself in a situation where you might confuse a woman's breasts with mountains? <laughs> is that a concern for you, do you think? No. Not, not a problem for you? Well, not if they're, not if they're small and humble, I wouldn't. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. That's what, fingers crossed. If they were small <laughs> and humble, then I'd, I'd pretty much not confuse them with mountains. Thank God, but I mean, if they were large and, and sort of pendulous. And with, like, like, quite rocky with snow on top. <laughs> exactly. Then I'd go, hold on, love. Wait a minute. Hold on, love. I was into this, but now exactly. it, I feel like I'm alone. Carl, do you know what we're talking about? Who's who has who has done that? I'll Who's give you a clue. One more time. See my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> Shakira. It's a it's lyric that taking the nation by with. storm. It's quite a nice song. It's got another. It's very much like it sounds a bit like uh, Men at Work down under. Yeah, it's got the pan pipes. Is this uh, what's its kid? Who? Um, Julio Iglesias. <laughs> no, it's Shakira. <laughs> Consequently, I... the word Shakira there being mentioned. I haven't heard of him. Okay, she's a big Latin star apparently, big Latin American star. Uh. And uh, anyway, just sing it again for us. See, here my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> Which is a concern. It was always a concern. Definitely. And she, a number of times she's woken up and there's been a fat bloke with a beard and a little a little Sherpa. She goes, "What are you doing?" And they go, "We're just trying oh. to climb this map." Look again. Oh, sorry, love. Oh, she's tits. I didn't realise. Oh, tits. We thought we were in. I can't hey, believe too. it. I can't. Well, can we camp? Here? You can't camp on my tits for the night. No. Well, why are you climbing them? Well, I just because they confused. were there. Well, they're small and humble. What are you mental? Look <laughs> at <laughs> Carl. I love that look of Carl. Carl is looking back and forth. You know when, it, when you sort of uh, uh, you go t -t -t to a cat and it looks back and forth between two people. That's very much like Carl's looking at us now. Or when like a child sees a midget or something in the street. <laughs> They're just transfixed, aren't they? And the parents oh, just don't stare. When we were pushing um, Ash, just the, our producers uh, in a wheelchair, and we were pushing he's through the VC. He's not a midget. We should make. No, he's not a little midget. He's not tall. But um, we were pushing him through the VC, and this little kid just came up and just stood in front of him and looked at him. Yeah. <laughs> I just laughed. It was funny. <laughs> do you do that? I imagine that you get caught staring. At him. Yeah, do you go up to people? Do you go up to people with problems and go, "Mummy, is that a monster?" Well, I was telling you one about when I used to go with my dad in the taxi. Oh, yeah. Well, Tell what this story. Well, um... Your dad, father was a taxi driver? My dad used... He had loads of jobs. Mm. Which he did back then. They don't do that anymore, do they, people? Don't... They don't <laughs> have do loads of, jobs? of stuff. Sure. But, um, it, one, at one point, he had a black cab and I, I used to, uh... Used to go with him. Used to get, a, like, a, a beer crate and put it in the front of the black cab. Yeah. Sort of sit just next to the meter. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> Anyway, we got this call, and, uh, like, the guy on the end of the radio said, oh, you've, you've got, uh, you've got your son with you, haven't you? So he said, yeah. He said, oh, it's just like, you know, we've got a pick-up at, uh, number 11 Village Lane or whatever. And he said, oh, all right. And it was this woman. It was like a woman version of the Elephant Man. Wow. The Elephant Woman? Yeah, it looked like... <laughs> it, it, looked, it, looked like it was really oh. strange, because I was in the front of the cab, and, um, when you're a kid, you, if you, if something locks on, you, you're a bit scared of it, aren't you? Yeah. And my dad was like, look, be all right. And we're, we're driving towards just, her. Look at her, don't worry, son, I've got loads of buns. And just to I think I'll just throw one down the street if it, if you run right after you're it. You're being mean, right? How I old am a little bit, yeah. How old were you, 18? No, I was, I was about 12 or sure. something like that. 11, 12. Hmm. And as we got closer to her, it looked like she, she, she was holding, like, a bag of spuds on her shoulder. For a snack. <laughs> right. <laughs> And her head was all a bit mangled and messy and that. And uh, my dad says, my dad said, whatever you do, don't stare at her face. Yeah. And she got in the back. Because you turn into stone. Well, <laughs> she got in the back, and I, I had like the mirror, the, dri the driver's mirror thing, yeah. and sort of having, having a look trying to work out. And I really, I mean, he said, don't stare at her face. I couldn't work out where her face was. <laughs> it was that. It was that weird. <laughs> oh God. So I'm not sure you're from. Manchester. I think you're from like Narnia or something. <laughs> yeah, you or, got frog or, boys walking yeah, around the Lord of the Rings. That, that got like the claws of a lobster and the and the head of a toad. Yeah, and you got women getting in with spuds for heads. I mean, what what this sort is not of what is this, this is not place? The place you grew up. This is yeah, oh, you can't believe it in London, can you? You come down and you go, look, symmetry. It must be amazing. It must be a, a thing to do with upbringing, though, mustn't it? And because again, do you know I've said to you before. Years ago, when I was a kid and didn't have any worries, 
good looking lad. Mm. You go through it a bit, have a few more worries, and you look knackered. <laughs> now, back there, there's a lot more worries and stuff, so you get a lot more freaks. Whereas in London, everyone's like happy, aren't they? Got I love the fact it. that stress can cause your <laughs> fingers to fuse and your heads yeah. to grow. No, but if, if she like... must have been really stressed to have a head <laughs> yeah, yeah. She what, was, <laughs> yeah, was she an accountant or something? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. But what? But what does she do? What does she say? Where was she, she going, going by the way? She, she couldn't speak. London <laughs> Zoo, please. <laughs> she was. She was going to like to a the fair. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> honest to God. <laughs> On my mum's life, she was. Because at the end of the day, that's a good thing with animals. They don't judge you, do they? She's not she an, was animal. an animal. She's a human being. She's not actually an elephant. No, but she You know the elephant man was not actually an elephant. <laughs> you understand that? He's got no elephant genes in him at all. No. That was just a cruel name people gave him. Yeah. No, it's the name of the disease, isn't it? Elephantitis. <laughs> so listen. So this woman, why was she going to a pet shop? <laughs> she was going to a pet shop? <laughs> what, to find a husband? <laughs> Is this, is this true? No, it is true, yeah. Oh, I'm, God. I'm not, I'm not taking the mickey, because it must be so, really bad for you. Of course you. it is. Oh, yeah, Carl, 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 oh, Carl, I'm, I'm going on to you today about cutting myself shaving. Yeah. I was going on about that, to think that she, I mean, she's probably not alive now, but to <laughs> think. But, but you're saying, you're going to say this is a worse problem than a little cut shaving, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The I think you're right. Carl, just, there's, there's a couple of key questions I need to ask. One, if she couldn't talk, yeah. how did she tell your dr father where to drive it? Did she have it written on a note? Did she point with her nose? <laughs> yeah. Right, this has got silly. Pick your songs. But and also, <laughs> finally, where did you say she lived again? It was like in a village. A little small village. Right. Um, just and hidden and out of the way. All I'm saying is we could maybe get like some sort of coach, book some coaches, get a coach party out there to have a look at her. <laughs> and, some uh, photos. and now... <laughs> you can make some lemonade. The offspring of a woman and some spuds. Yeah. <laughs> Please <laughs> enter at your peril. Should you give me a shiny shilling? Wow. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'm going to play um, a little bit of Teenage Fan Club song for uh, the lovers here. We left it very late. We've been just, uh, you know, rapping with uh, Carl P here. And this is I Need Direction. Teenage Fan Club. Oh, they're a good band. They are they? a good band. XFM 104.9. Um, so, well, we're, we're nearly there. So, will your girlfriend be proud of you now? You performed a PhD graduate there. It's a bit annoying, because she's not in London today. She's in Sunderland or something, or Newcastle. Right. Working. So, she won't know what the, your greatest triumph. She, she, she saw last week, and you got an E in history, and now this week you, you come through. Yeah. With some great praise that Miss, Mrs. Matthews never, you know, laid upon Even you, did she? Oh. No, just said you won't be a high flyer. Eh? You've shown them, haven't you? You never know. I mean, I had mates who, um, <laughs> like, you know, my mate Colin Makin, who sure. did the disco with me. Pilkins making music, yeah. Pilkins making music. Yeah. He was dead brainy. I don't, I don't think he's up to much these days. Sure. Just, you just, can't plan it. Yeah. Just goes yeah. to show. Well, I mean, you can do yeah, a certain amount of planning you can do. I mean, driving a tank down to the shops with some fags, <laughs> yeah. never going to mean you're a high flyer. You and that, that, that woman uh, who you picked up in your black cab, she's in a circus now and... She yeah, can happy. fly, which is good. Am I confusing that with a film? You went to see a film this week, didn't you? Mm. What, what did you, you see? see? Um, the, um, Monsters, Inc. Oh, did yeah. you have a little argument? What was the argument about? Did you have an argument with your girlfriend or something? Cause about... Well, the history thing took over last weekend, to be honest, when you found out my results. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the talking topic of most of the weekend. And <laughs> why? What did she you say? Know, you brought it on yourself, you know, why didn't you take it serious, you know? Was you she annoyed or upset? Well, she just sort of said, you can learn. Look, you, you learned Rasputin. Mm. You know, if only you did You've that. You've done that. School. You've done Rasputin. You know I mean? She said, you can do it if, if you're told to. She said, you know, it's only because Ricky's told you to read the book that you're reading it. Mm. Does she, she think said, we're sort of like taskmasters? Does she think we bully well, you? Uh, nah, she knows it's just a laugh. Yeah. What did you, did you tell your uh, parents about your... No. Nope. No. Never? Because they, they never even questioned where my results were, so I don't want to tell them that, you know, I didn't <laughs> get any. No. What, how did they do it at school? I didn't have them back then, did they? Right. <laughs> uh, when was that, Carl? The, the middle, middle ages. ages. I don't know. I mean, like I say, back then it wasn't about getting results and that, was it? It was just about learning trades. Mm. I mean, my dad, right, he can, like, put windows in his house. Yeah. Do plumbing. He should. It's dark, isn't it? He's, he's done that, first of all. Right, so, so he can do what? He's got a multitude of different yeah, jobs. Yeah, he can do all sorts. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If there's a problem in my flat, I can call him up and say, you know, this isn't working, what should I do? Mm. And he'll say, like... Is that not brain surgeon? He'll yeah. say, oh, fix it. Sure. Uh, so what about Monsters, Inc.? What yeah. did you make of it? 
Um, it's all right. It's, it, it is a kid's film. It, it sort of annoys Is it? <laughs> okay. I was having, like... <laughs> <laughs> what, what gave that away, do you think? <laughs> Was it the songs? Was it the animation? <laughs> yeah, the fluffy was little it... <laughs> things that squiggled round on the screen for yeah. an hour and a half. It is annoying because, like, there's kids everywhere and kids don't watch films, so they... No. You know what I mean? They're messing around. I don't know why they make kids films. And you can't, to be honest, it's mental. You can't concentrate properly when mm. you've got kids, you know, Screaming, making training. noise around you and that. Yeah. So I'd say, my little review, wait until it comes out on DVD. Okay. <laughs> what a great review that would <laughs> be! Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Film 2002. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Ross going... Well, I don't want to give it away when it comes out on DVD. Yeah. Oh. No, but not giving it away. It's just that you can't watch it properly when there's kids screaming around you. Yeah. Sure. Do you know what I mean? What are you looking forward to this week? You're going to go and see anything? Just been talking to Ricky now because me and missus is away. I'll probably uh, get out a DVD tonight. Yep. Rounders. Oh right. Okay. I thought you might like that. And if like you can get, so, but, I mean, if I can get you tickets, say in the stores or in a box for the stage version of Midnight Express, would you be up for that? <laughs> it's on. It's on ice. I think it's, it's the final year, it, isn't it's it? It's lovely. It's Midnight Express on ice. Yeah. And it's a musical as well. They're on roller skates. Do you have any dope under your jacket? No. Yeah. It and is they, well they, worth it's, it's, it's great. John yeah. Hurt is actually in this version as well, yeah. which is fantastic. Who played the Elephant Man? So it's all comes. The universe all comes together. Have you ever seen the stage version of the Elephant Man? No. You'd love that? Yeah. Who's in that? I have seen a clip of it. Who plays him? Uh, I've, I've I think they've got a real guy with actual, with elephantitis. Right. Yeah. What are you finishing on? Uh, let's, uh, have a final song for the ladies. It's from, uh, the album Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me by The Cure, and it's the beautiful catch. See Goodbye. You next week. See you next week, everybody. Bye-bye. Uh, this is Strokes and, uh, Last Night. Um, we just had a call, um, didn't we? From, uh, um, Johnny Mango. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Johnny been, Mango, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, old, 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 the Mangster. Um, and he informed me that one of the worst was his dead, and I didn't know that. Yeah, Ash Cutler, who was the lead man, I think. Yeah. It was, he said he died the most rock and roll death you can die. He said he was, uh, apparently driving on a, on a terrible cocktail of cider and other things, presumably. Yeah. Of, uh, apples and jams. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he crashed into a tractor. Now, I wonder, is that true? Who I, knows? I, 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 JM's not winding me up. Yeah, I, hope them, I hope the Mango Boy's not having yeah. a laugh at me. Is that true? Jo uh, one of the words was died by tractor. <laughs> Did he? D is, is that true? So give us a call. What's is the number know? again, Carl? Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. If so, I'm I'm sorry that I disrespected them. I didn't I didn't know. Could you imagine? Oh God. If, right, say if like you're the driver of the tractor. Mm. Mm. And you c you kill someone, you go, oh God, I've killed someone. Mm. And then you look, and it's someone famous. Yeah, or Ad Cutler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. What was your point? No, it's just like not Terrifying, only yeah. it's like you've killed someone, then you look. But I mean, yeah, I know what you mean. And what that makes is, it even worse? <laughs> and what, what makes it even worse? They were rich. Yeah. Oh, no, that'd but be... say if it was someone who's like really big in the world. No, that is a good- I quite like that. It's an interesting point, though. Oh, that's your bag. No wonder I can't find what I'm looking for. Oh, right, well- As Bono <laughs> said. Did you bring a bag? Yeah. Sorry, I'm There's just, a, Is that under there, Rick? Sorry, uh, sorry about this, I'm not- I'm not- record. Record. This is getting a bit slop sloppy, you no, know? No, 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 it's not- no, no, no! No, it is, Rick, it's getting is sloppy. It? It's never got sloppy before. No, I've got a list here, cos we went to, um, this award ceremony in the week. Um, uh, we were up for an award. Well, let yeah. me- I have to explain it to Carl, cos, uh, basically we were up for an award, and it's called the- it's the Trick Awards. Now, Trick stands for, uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Annual Awards, right? We it's never heard of it either. We never heard of it. It's some kind of, like, television radio, uh, industry club. Right. That's what yeah, that's the clue, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, we don't want to- I'm not trying to slag off the award, because no. it was, you know, it was, it was a big thing and they really made an effort and it was really nice, food was brilliant, it was at the Grosvenor House Hotel, really nice do and, you know, lots of industry people in that there, it was really classy. We got there nice and early, so, you know, yeah. we were there for a good four yeah. hours. Before we had fun. to sit down. And, <laughs> but it was just kind of surreal, it was just a bit weird, because it was packed with the cream, I'm mean, literally the cream, big names, you know, uh, Martin Kemp, one of the first people I saw, you know, came in, like, big TV radio industry names, on-screen talent, behind the scenes people. John Barnes. Barnes was there. Um. Beadle was there. Sir Cliff Richard was there. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so, it, it, the, the voice comes on and says, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the- President. The president of the, the, uh, Trick Awards. And we had to g stand up, all of these people had to stand up and give a standing ovation, as he walked to his table, to Tom O'Connor, former presenter of Crosswits. You are joking. No. He's the president. And he came out, he told a few gags, sort of like, it was like, straight away, it was, you know, old school stuff. You want know, to thank the ladies, because, you know, it was nothing without the ladies, all the lovely ladies here. And we're waiting for a joke. 
No. <laughs> just thanking the ladies. Well, you're forgetting that just prior to that, he, uh, he said grace. Oh, he said grace. Before we ate. Right. It's me, it was me, Steve, and Ash, you know, our producer, the little, um, disabled fella. Right, and he's he's there in his wheelchair, and there's me and Steve. We're, you know, we're we're, we're standing up during grace. Oh, no, can I just stop you there? Go on. Saw someone in the week, <laughs> and um, sorry, did we bore you? No, no, no. <laughs> you just reminded me then about the Go little on. producer who yeah. was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Last week you said blah blah blah, and our producer who's in a wheelchair got a text from someone saying, "What's happened to you?" They thought you were talking about me. Oh, really? Oh. So yeah. Oh. You're, you're handicapped in a different way. <laughs> So go on. <laughs> and, uh, Tom O'Connor, he said, uh, uh, thank you, God, for- We thought yeah. this was a joke initially. We thought it was gonna be like a kind of cheeky gag. That's why we- that's why we were laughing out loud. <laughs> that's why we were laughing raucously. <laughs> <laughs> but we went anyway. And then he went, oh, thank you, God, for this, uh, and, uh, and help those who walk alone. And Ash went, what about those that don't walk at all? <laughs> he said, I've never been- I've never been left out of grace before. <laughs> So, but we had to, and we had to like, kind of like bowed our heads slightly, you know. And uh, did we say amen? I know that we were sort of lots of people did. I'm pretty sure. Cliff, I, didn't. I think, probably ch chimed in there. Yeah, and he so, sang it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, like Mariah Carey. So anyway, so but before again, you see, what Ricky's forgotten is before Tom took to the stage, this guy walks up there. I don't know who he is. Says there's a lot of people here this this afternoon. You know, it's a wonderful uh, event. But of course, there's a load of celebrities as well. He said, "Thank you for all the celebrities that have turned up." And then he went. Table 77. Mr. Russ Abbott. And we all round of applause. We, can we have the spotlight there? Russ Abbott, by the way, smoking a pipe. Um, absolutely. He looked like, uh, a bit like, um, uh, Barrett Holmes. <laughs> the hilarious Sherlock Holmes character. Then he went, table 107. The cast of Bad Girls. Clap. We'll have to clap. And then he went, <laughs> table 5. Alice Beer. Clap. Slightly smaller clapping. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and I thought, when is this gonna- uh, He went through every single celebrity in the room. And there were about, you know, a hundred. Table 53! John Inman, everyone! It's John Inman! Round of applause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, table 70. Mr. Simon Cowell. Boo! Yeah, there was- there was booing no. there. And yeah. they all booed him. That was nice. Yeah, that was a joke. Ironic booing, I think. Could they cheer for Foxy? Was he on the table? <laughs> oh, we didn't I see Foxy. Foxy wasn't there. He was doing his show. When they went up, they won an award. Cowell and, uh, Waterman and Chapman. Table uh, 43. Peter Sissons, everyone. Peter Sissons. <laughs> went through every single name. Ricky got so paranoid they might mention him that we- we kind of legged it upstairs and we're watching from the balconies. They shone the spotlight on our table. <laughs> <laughs> and it was yes. empty. <laughs> that was particularly fun. <laughs> But, uh, then at the end, Sir Cliff got up there, right, cause Sir Cliff was giving out the, um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, right, he gets up, he uses this speech, he goes, oh, this is a personal friend of mine, a seven days a week friend, Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mrs. Gloria Hunniford, right, we immediately start thinking what exactly were her Lifetime Achievements. I think living that long. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I don't know what it is she's done, Gloria Hunter. I don't exactly, you know, I know she's done a Radio 2 show, I don't think that's we're not anymore. Dissing, we're not dissing yeah, anyone. Good luck we're to not her. taking the mick out of anyone, but, you but, know. Uh, but anyway, it was she, just a strange, it was just a strange event. But Gloria got taken unawares by this and started to ad lib a speech, right? And I swear to God, about 12 minutes in, she was telling us how, and I can repeat, I can tell you now if you're interested, her lovely daughter Karen is currently in Australia, is partly work, is partly a holiday, Carl, and she's having a whale of a time, but she's not spoken to her for ages. And then she went, she went, Actually, she's been there for a long time. Yeah, it's and it's like I was thought she was going. She doesn't call. You yeah. do that, you get a blue Peter, and this is how you. <laughs> we thought she was going to get walls. photos out, maybe start showing it. it no, was it, was very, it was a It was a nice bizarre. event, and uh, you know, everyone there. Henry Coop was there. So Henry Coop <laughs> was because like every was single was element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah, and I was looking at the menu. I've got the program here, and the menu, right? The pudding is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you've ever had a pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. When, right. when everyone was doing the prayers, did you, did you look at them with their eyes shut, <laughs> like, like you did at school? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what, when you had Did to you look at someone with your eyes shut? No, like, you'd do that, you'd do your, um, your hands together. Yeah. Yep. And you sort of look at people with their eyes shut and think that's like what they look like when they're sleeping. <laughs> Play record. Didn't you ever do that? <laughs> Table 60. Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> that's a uh, corner shop, lessons learned from Rocky 1 to Rocky. I love that guitar. That's great, mm. it's real glam rock, that's T-Rex and Valley. I was in a, a place on it from, uh, Siggy Stardust today, but instead I brought in a different album, I want to play a bit of Bowie. Is that mm. alright? Oh, of course, yeah, always, yeah, always. Bit of Beatles. Mm. Still to come up, by the way. Um, we, uh, uh, with the education of Carl, last week he did, um, uh, Che Guevara. He did very well. Very well. Yeah. Before that, th the week before that, you learned all about Russ Putin, didn't you? Mm. And this week you've been studying Hitler, haven't you? Mm. How was that go? Do, how do you like that? It's a bit tough. Okay. Um. I mean, I'll, I'll give you the full story later, Steve. Do you know much about him? No. 
it's, um, mm -hmm. they're all linked, all these stories I've been reading, they've all got a similar sort of thing going through them. They're right. born, they have a bit of a tough upbringing, mm -hmm. um, things aren't going well, and they seem to take it out on, on other people. Okay. Right, I'll tell you more later. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you can, I mean, I don't think Hitler and Che Guevara It's the same thing. Think. Che Guevara, when he was a kid, yeah. had, like, asthma, mm -hmm. right? He wasn't an happy kid. Uh, Hitler, um, he, um, He only had one ball. Well, I was, I was trying right. to find about that. Yeah, seriously, he phoned me up in the week, I said, how's it going? He went, I've skimmed it, I've just skimmed it, I was looking for the, uh, the testicle thing. Now, I don't know if they left that out, or it's not true. Right. Which, so which he one? was, he was l trying to look up that Hitler has only got one ball. I think they only did it to wind him up. <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, you might be taking over the world, mm. but we're all saying you've only got one testicle. Sure. And it's so did you look? Did you look in the index and it's sort of Hitler, Adolf, <laughs> family life, early childhood, testicles, <laughs> testicles absence of. Sort of skim through because <laughs> one of it, yeah. mother, mother brackets other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Albert Hall. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could find was at one point in in like when he was trying to run the place, uh, <laughs> there was a meeting going on, and somebody put a bag in a, in the meeting room and it blew up. Yeah, and but I the wondered, table. Well, it was under the him. table. Yeah, but. What, you're wondering if it blew a testicle? It was, it was, <laughs> the, what, the testicle was under the table. No, the like, bag, the bag blew off the ball. No, the ball thing. sack was probably hanging below the, uh, protective top, and so that's where he could have lost- But why would he have only just lost the one? Uh, because the- The way he was uh, sitting. <laughs> Cross-legged or something. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, again, again, if, I mean, last week we had a Che Guevara expert phoned up, maybe they could, uh, maybe there's a Hitler expert this time who could, uh, maybe phone up and confirm the, uh, the testicle, uh, yeah. theory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the number again, Carl? Oh wait, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. You need to have at least I, I, have a PhD I, I, or something. I don't think we should invite calls about Hitler. I think we're asking for trouble. No, I'm talking no. about someone who's done a study of him and who's done a PhD. Oh, okay. I'm not talking oh, about right. any old nutter. Uh, and also, um, uh, Carl's lottery numbers. He's a little bit more confident this week. Okay, good. He, he, he went there more like it. And I looked at him and I laughed. He went, no, no, even Suzanne said I'm, I'm on the, more on the right lines there. <laughs> Is there is anyone who, um, uh, has done a degree in maths or A-level maths that can bear- Carl won't believe this, right? Carl thinks, I was trying to, I, I know I was tr uh, partly doing it to confuse him, just see that look on his face like a cat, right? But there is, th the, the chances with a, a, a random numbers, for, the, for example the lottery, of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, are no greater than any other single combination. Right. Now that's true. I don't mean you're more likely to get one, two, three, four, five, six than any other combination put together, but then any other individual combination, they're all equal. It's counterintuitive, I know. You, I know you think that to get a run of one to six is less likely than anything else, but it's not. Uh, any name it to it's not, Carl. If there's a, a problem- well, it's never happened. Yeah, it's, ne it's never happened. Yeah, but there's any well, number there's of combinations a, that have never happened. happened. Every one of those combinations that have come up, Mm. have happened, and they're just as likely, or unlikely, as any other combination, right? Mm. It's just that you feel, intuitively, right, that one, two, three, four, five, six are l is less likely than one, seven, twelve, thirty-four, sixty, you know what I mean? Well, I didn't win. Play <laughs> <laughs> record. Okay. <laughs> Wu-Tang Clan, Uzi, on XFM 104.9. Well, here we are, the day before. St. Patrick's Day. Oh, hooray! Brilliant! Guinness, etc. Oh, I hate people, I hate British English people, I should say, who, who are obsessed with celebrating St. Patrick's Day. You know, all crazy, it's like Chris Evans used to rave on about it. We're going to Dublin, we're gonna get drunk, wow. It's like, it means nothing I to me. I think XFM just did that, to be well, honest. Well, yeah, exactly. Just as bad. Careful, bang. careful, they are employers. <laughs> you don't wanna, you don't wanna annoy them. What, what would we do without this? <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, have an enjoyable Saturday. No, this is my favourite two hours. You like this, don't you? Well, I don't know. We're not, we can't do this through May and June. No, we'll be gone. We've got to, be, we've got to record the second series of The Office. What are we going to do, Carl? What are you going to do on a Saturday? Host a show yourself? Do it on my own. Yeah. You, you are not. Are you seriously thinking of it? Have they asked you made to do you it? everything you Why, why would you not think about it? Because I've, I've been there, done that. <laughs> 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 Next challenge, please! Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Do you know what, do you know what, what St. Patrick did? Why he was revered as a saint and everything? What was he famous for in Ireland? He did, he rid Ireland of something. I don't know, but I bet he started off with something odd happening in his life. <laughs> <laughs> what, you think he had asthma or something as a kid? Ah! They, all, they all do. Uh, and he took it out on what though? What did he do? Exactly, he took it out on something. What did he do? What did he rid Ireland of? Uh St. Patrick. 
St. Patrick. This is why we're gonna get crazy and drunk tomorrow. This is why we're all so happy to celebrate his, uh, anniversary or whatever it is yes. we're celebrating. This is that's why we- That's why we have a crack. Yeah, this is why we don't bother to celebrate, you know, the birthdays of James Joyce, you know, one of the great novelists of this century, or Samuel Beckett, one of the great playwrights. We actually celebrate this man, St. Patrick, the man oh, who I did don't, what? Don't diss him, he, he did a good job of it as well, because there's none there now. There are none of these in Ireland. So, mm. he rid Ireland of something. Come on, Carl. Think of something. Just give us an answer. What's he went round on a horse whacking them and- He went on a horse whacking them? Yeah. yeah. What was it, Carl? What did he rid Ireland of? Went on a horse. Foxes. I don't well, know. Well, no, you're no, on the right lines. On the right lines. Um, It was an animal. Oh. Bears. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was bears. <laughs> wow. It was snakes. Right. And there are no snakes in Ireland. He rid Ireland of all the snakes. Yeah. Who did it here then? Because there isn't that many. <coughs> well, I think he, he had a, he had a stab at it over here as well, but got tired and went back. Yeah. That's why there's it's, just a few snakes here. Is, is it true that there are no snakes in Ireland? I think it is. I think if, if someone called us And what is there, is there any historical evidence for St. Patrick ridding them of- I mean, how did he do it? Was it like the Pied Piper? See, I, I, I'm not convinced that- he did go around and kill them snakes, but there are no snakes really? in Ireland, and that's yeah. I, I don't think he's now. If someone knows he's now, we were someone just uh, we had a few uh, uh, probability experts and statisticians and, and maths graduates confirming that indeed I was correct that the probability of one to six in a row is no more or less likely than any other single combination mm. in a totally random selection of balls, which brings us back to Hitler, doesn't it? Because he only had one, didn't he? Well, um, but coming up, we'll be asking Carl all about Hitler, the education of Carl. He's done Rasputin, he's done Che Guevara. Plus, of course, uh, White Van Carl, where we White ask Van Carl, Carl some of the, uh, you know, his opinions on some of the hot potatoes of the week. You learn as you go along, because you've got something about St. Patrick there. Yeah. That was thrown in for free, that was an extra- I'll, I'll learn you something eh? Snakes. Well, yeah. I'll, sorry, can I just stop you there and I'll teach you something, right? Oh, go on then. You don't learn someone something, you teach them something. Yeah. It's, it's not tra- it, 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 one's passive. You, you, do you, you learn. You? Ricky, I'm or, sorry mate, but I don't think you should be teaching people how to speak or use grammar. <laughs> I just don't think it's appropriate. Snake. It's like, it's embarrassing, <laughs> frankly. Because there's so many errors that you're making, it's like, where to start with you? <sighs> snakes, right? You're talking about snakes? Yeah. There's, a lot of snakes are born with two heads. It's like a, it's like a... <laughs> Familiar type thing that sn that happens to snakes. Okay, yeah. they take it for granted, don't they? Right, snakes born two heads. They'll fight each other for food, even though it's going in the same body. Isn't that weird? Mm. Were there kids at school that you went? <laughs> <laughs> who had two heads? The, the that? snake twins. Yeah. From Mosley. Oh, was, it, was, it, was, it, was there, there was kids at your school with two heads? Was that right? What? No, no. They had they big had big heads. heads. Oh, they had big heads and webbed hands, but they yeah. weren't related. And they, they weren't friends, because that would have been too obvious, yeah. he said. Yeah. Oh, oh, Steve, listen, before you came in, right, I sneezed a couple of times. So if I'm allergic, I've still got a bit of a cold. And I said, oh, oh God, he went, he went, bloody hell, I was like, sorry. And he went, and he went, you know you can't sneeze with your eyes open? I went, yeah, yeah. And then he was obviously thinking to himself still, and after a pause he went, would your eyes really fly out? <laughs> uh, and I started laughing. He went, no, because that, has anyone ever done that, do you think? <laughs> has anyone ever held someone down, torturing them, and held their eyelids open and gave them pepper and see if their eyes would fly out? And he said, and then, and then he went, uh, put, uh, I'm just looking at him again, the silence, and, he, and he, then he went, of his own accord, he just went, I can't see it happening. <laughs> <laughs> Your song here, Ricky. Oh, this, uh, yeah, uh, um, Bowie. Sorrow, beautiful. Sorrow by David Bowie. Uh, I've got that on a compilation today, but I, th I think it's off originally off uh, the Pinups album, the one we did all the covers. Because he didn't write that, did he? Uh, the, the, that was the one with um, him and Twiggy on the front cover, isn't it? Right. I haven't had that for ages. I haven't got that. So uh, sorry, you lost me. I don't know what you're talking about? Are you reading a the book there? No, I was just reading the um, the uh, brochure there, the uh, program, if you will, for the uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Awards that we went to. Incidentally, we we, we lost. Mm. Uh, we we lost to Linda Green. Yeah, we didn't win an award. The best comedy. But uh, you might be interested to know that Tom O'Connor is in constant demand for corporate functions both here and abroad, and his client list includes many multinational companies. No mean golfer, Tom took the literary world by surprise in 1992 when his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I noticed it didn't take the, the literary world by storm. No. <laughs> it took it by surprise. They're going, we can't say storm. <laughs> we can't, we've got to say by surprise from behind. 
But, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, uh, his, his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I don't know if that's just books about golf, that bestseller list. Subsequent successful books include One Flew Over the Clubhouse. Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. Take a Funny Turn. Follow me, I'm right behind you, and eat like a horse, drink like a fish. Does it but mention Celebrity s Squares? Didn't he do that? No. Uh, he did, um, the Crosswits. name that tune. Crosswits. Well, that's right, um, I was, uh, it's, uh... Crosswits. Do you remember Crosswits? It, it was, was from the, the 80s. It was like a crossword game oh, show. It was yeah. often with, um, Kate Copstick. But, but I saw one, right, it was on the, it was on Challenge, uh, TV being reviewed. And no, Andy Crane, remember Andy Crane? Yeah. Tim, he was on the, he was the, uh, link man, and he went, coming up next, uh, Tom O'Connor with, uh, uh, Crosswits, with, uh, well, in my opinion, one of the best crosswits players of all time, John Junkin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Who's your favourite crosswits player? Uh, oh, it's gotta be Junkin, for me as well. But Copstick was Barry right. Cryer's bloody good, though. Cryer was good. Cryer was good. I watched Call My Bluff, um, uh, in the week. He's just with Toxic and, uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was quite good. I quite enjoyed I it. I imagine you could get on there if you wanted. I used to watch it with, um, what's his name? Frank Moore. <laughs> yeah. Frank Moore. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was great. You were impression. brilliant impressions, because obviously I, while Bowie was playing, you were doing your infamous Bowie impression, which is th the best one you do, actually. Well, that's just because Carl said, you know what, he said, I'd love to go out for a drink with David Bowie. Of all the people that come in here for sessions, I think he's really good him. And I said, I think he'd like you as well. That's all, and I just went, hello, Carl. You're strange, you're alien. It interests me. Myself and Ian, I'd like to put you on them. Yeah, I just imagine you and Bowie in a pub somewhere. Isn't that pretty much the same impression you do when you do Ian Canfield? No. <laughs> Ian Canfield's more like that. <laughs> but not on air. On air he's sort of like this sort of eloquent 40-year-old capital DJ. Yeah. And but uh, when you talk to him in the studio... In, he's, he's, slowly like the turning, he's, st he's slowly turning into uh, Tommy Vance, isn't he? Mm -hmm. This is one of his pillars of rock, Canfield. He loves Vance, <coughs> Lemmy, uh, Diano. If we, uh, if we run out of material later in the show, which is... Yeah, likely. Yeah. Uh, considering we're, we're now talking about no, Ian Campbell. We ran out of it at <laughs> five past one. Exactly. But could we, could I maybe just sort of interview you as David Bowie? Yeah, that would... In a sort of humorous sketch? Yeah, that would be fantastic. Maybe it could be the idea that what if, like, David Bowie was, you know, a cab driver? What well, would he say? What was his well, funny that, things he would we say? We saw that, um, that, what was that in when it said, uh, um, Dead Ringers coming up? If you've ever wondered what, uh, yeah, it did, would did sound you see like... This? Dead, Dead Ringers is this impressionist show. They did a, it's on Radio 4 and they did a TV version. Yeah, I saw it. What did you make of it? I didn't like it. It was alright, no, it was just that the write-up in, uh, the one Times, magazine, it was. Radio Times, said, uh, ever wondered what it'd be like if, uh, Robbie Williams was singing George Formby, or what would it be like if, uh, there was an animal was, hospital was- I think it was hosted by, uh, Anne Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually, you know, I have. I have wondered. Was it, were those two sketches on there last night? Yeah. Yeah. What were yeah. they like? You are, you are the weakest- You are the weakest dog Skink. <laughs> no, what was it? It was something like, the, the- they had to vote off an animal to die or something. It was something like that, yeah. It was this is flagging. Quick, do your Bowie again. Um, oh, come in here. Look, it's Tim Machine. Now let's play Changes. Hello, Iggy Pop, you nutter. Stop cutting your head. <laughs> Travis, flowers in the window on XFM 104.9. Two o'clock, halfway through. Oh, it's our favourite time, isn't it? My yeah. favourite time of the week where we come in here and, uh, Play some records. Have a chat. Ricky, a lot of people are wondering who you are. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hi. And there's little Carl over there. Uh -huh. Steve, it's time for... White Van Carl. Uh, we should definitely get some jingles. I think it, it, the show sort of lacks jingles, I think. Yeah. Noises. Yeah. Funny sound effects. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 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 yeah. What's Mr. Nosey Nosy Neighbour interested? Hello? What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we should definitely get some pre-recorded comedy noises, Carl. Yeah, yeah well, that's my job, but unfortunately I'm busy reading about Hitler. <laughs> 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 oh, um, oh. For those that don't know and aren't familiar with this feature, basically uh, the Sun runs a white van man column where um, it asks uh, just people who, you know, every kind of, every, every men and women, their views on uh, news stories from the week, and uh, we decided we'd just ask Carl his opinion on some of the same issues. This week, not like um, us to rip off another idea and just use no, it for no, our own. No, 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 no. No, but this time, the yeah, white van man in the sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow in Middlesex. Um, Herbie, and he's been as he's asked to, asked his opinion, Carl. And what's yours on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay? Come um, on, Carl. It's I don't understand what the big deal is to be honest. Okay. No. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales. You know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is. It's rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? 
Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right? And, and Freddie Mercury. I was into, uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now- And her kids You're not gonna tell me she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's, she's, you know, a, a leather. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say, right, that's it, I'm taking kids in America back to the shop, I'm disgusted. Sure. I liked her. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm ever gonna, like, meet her and marry her and that, so what does it matter? Yeah. Will Young, she's a good voice, he's gay, you know, a lot of gay people in the world. Georgia boy was gay, I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So Do your Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Brilliant. Kidding of Georgie parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band, before you say. Right, wh what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well the police have, uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, try and get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy see. helmets anymore. Yeah. They want flat caps. They feel that their, um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted, they get a lot of bad press, they're not being paid well, they they're not, they're only they, they actually, um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside I think somewhere. they may have done, yeah. yeah. Well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. They're, they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. yeah. I admire that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah. do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at- they That's were looking I, for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Did a Sherman tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of fears that dumped Britney Spears, she's been dumped by her boyfriend, there's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl? <sighs> you what, concerned? What, what are the signs? <coughs> Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure, I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe? She'll be alright. I remember, like, you know, <laughs> Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Get over it, I don't even think about her now. <laughs> 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 what, uh, and how long did it take you, how long did it take you to get over Zoe Harris? How long did it take <laughs> you to- To be honest, right, it was like one of my first girlfriends and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her because <laughs> she wouldn't stop hassling me, right? Yeah. I remember- <laughs> A good reason that, to that. that. Oh, go on then. I never talked to her, and then the <laughs> bit that really got me- I thought I half liked her, and then I remember, right, we are at a school party, sort of infant school. <laughs> <laughs> infant school? Right. Are you sure it wasn't junior school? Well, it's on the cusp, yeah. right, when you're about to leave infants and go yeah. to the next one. Yeah. And, um, she was crying because- You were saying, I don't think we should move in together. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she was crying. She was crying. Oh, oh well, what, she, had you she stolen been, her milk? She must have been nearly six. Why didn't she grow up? No, so, she, was, she was crying because somebody had stood on a dress and put a bit of an hole in it. And I said, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand it. Oh, so God. You, <laughs> I just think of him. So you gave her a slap? No, I just think of him in like six, like with clogs and a flat, flat cap going slightly bald, going for yeah. Christ's sake, woman, come on. <laughs> oh, light my pipe. Oh. That finished it because all her mates were saying, come on, Carl, she's upset. And I was like, oh, whatever. So <laughs> oh God, no! Wait a minute. What do you mean? All the mates were saying, "Look, like, come on, Carl." They were six, weren't they? Yeah, but they were saying, "Come on, she's crying. Help her out." And, like, and you did nothing. I don't. I she's got injured. <laughs> got all in a skirt. Yeah, but she was upset, and you were her boyfriend. Oh, well. So what did you do? Tell me the story. Where were you? Didn't work out. You were at some kind of school do. <laughs> there was a hole That's in her dress. It didn't work out. He said. I don't, do you treat your current girlfriend in the same way? This callous disregard for someone's uh, current, His current mm -hmm. girlfriend does not tread on her dress. Does yeah. she? Huh. Oh, she didn't. So, as far as you're concerned, what was her name? Sarah? Zoe. Zoe Harris. You just felt like, well, you know, she's gonna make a whinge about, you know, a silly little hole. Screw her. Yeah. You're all, you're all heart, Carl. What would you have done? I'd have gone over there and give her a lovely kiss. No, you wouldn't. Yes, we I would. We were playing dead arm. <laughs> <laughs> In the corner. Ask him another oh, question. Okay, very final, oh. um, thought then. Uh, what do you say to the fact that judge, a judge has decided that, uh, we, the general public, have a right to know about, uh, stars' flings? Basically, this is an excuse. This is basically saying, should pra papers be allowed to print tittle-tattle about celebrities? Oh, this is- Providing it's proven true. Oh, th this is something about, isn't it a Division One football or something? It's definitely had a, a, a premiership football, it's unfair. And it is true, but he's trying to keep privacy, and the judge said, well, it's not for us to- sense the press over things that are true, right. it's up to the general public to either boycott or not 
you know, that, that publication. What do you think, Carl? What about all this, you know, exposing, uh, going through the, uh, you know, the bins of celebrities? It's not right, is it? But no. people are uh, interested in, in it and buy the papers to read it, do you know what I mean? I mean, like I said to you the other week, everyone has a go at Beckham for not being that bright. But at the end of the day, he's a good footballer. It doesn't really matter what goes on yeah. off the pitch, does it? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So but what if you were I a celebrity and they sort of splashed over the front page the fact that you just, you know, didn't care Not less for Zoe Harris because, yeah. and her torn dress? Zoe Harris is still upset. Yeah, they dug her out, you know. The night Carl Pilkington reduced me to tears. <sighs> nah, I haven't done anything that bad. Sure. I wouldn't be worried. Did you win the dead arm contest? No. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Do you think there's a chance I could get blood clots in later life? Did you play that a lot? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Do you ever do it, but like, kind of headbutting? No. Okay. Because that would have explained something. Dead arms. Sure. Any more? No, that's it, Carl. Um, it it was with people's blessing, was it? You had to give them a go? Yeah. And you played it with girls? No. Alright. Oh, and the mates. Right. So oh, you okay. were playing dead arms while she was off dancing and getting her hole ruined? Yeah. <laughs> you romantic, you. That's great. <laughs> and you haven't changed a bit, have you? You still do that to this day, don't you? At functions and events. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, well, dear. what track we got here? You've brought in a track. Yes, I just thought I'd dig out some old uh, Elliot Smith. Uh, I've quite enjoyed his work, and this was a previous single and uh, the first track from his album Figure Eight, Son of Sam. XFM 104.9. Sorry, I was going to uh, back announce that track and just mention it was uh, Elliot Smith and the track Son of Sam. Well, I think I'd just better ask um, Carl a couple of quick questions about Hitler. Then we can, uh, we can, you know, get on with our lives. Okay, and <laughs> we can tick that particular box. <laughs> yeah, put that, uh, uh, old, yeah. Okay, uh, Carl. Okay, put that particular it's, dictator it's, to bed. It's week, it's, it's week three of his education. You've, you've nailed Rasputin and Che Guevara. I don't want to lose complete sight of those. I, you know, I'll, I'll maybe, um, ask you a couple of those in the week just to see, keep your, your mind on it. But Hitler. What, Tell what, us the story. What have you learnt? Do you want to ask some questions? Uh, no, not really. Just, 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 just sum it up. In a minute, what is what? what I can't do, you do it in a minute. <laughs> well, uh, can I ask some questions then? Uh, where was he born? Austria. Tell us about his early life. Right, he was a young lad. <laughs> um, he, uh, <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> what in his early life? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. He, what's the name? His his um his mum yeah. was his dad's second cousin, which is a bit weird. Yeah, that is weird. Um, they had five kids. <laughs> He's going. Yeah, it's usually first cousin where I come from. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's unfair, isn't it? Jeez, There's no cool. need for that. There was, uh, there was, there was five kids, but only two of them, including Hitler, um, including, uh, him and his sister survived, the others died at an early age. Okay. Right. right. Um, anyway, so, they grew up, and, um, the mum died and the dad died and that, and he thought, oh, what am I gonna do? Because he didn't do well at school, didn't have many qualifications. No. Liked art. Did he have a GCSE in history? Liked art, right, and then, um... So he said, right, I'm gonna go out to Munich. I missed a bit out, actually. Jewish people were in Austria, he didn't really like them. Okay. Uh, he thought they got, you know, uh, special treatments and stuff and just didn't like them. So he went to Munich and, um, he, uh, joined the army. Right. Yeah? Yeah. And, um, he was in the army and he got injured. Right. So he went to hospital and whilst he was in hospital, uh, the World War One ended and he was like, oh god, I want to- I was doing that. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't, cause you're breaking the concentration. Yeah, sorry. I, uh, I'm not even sure I want to join in on this one, just in case. Okay. Right, go on. Right, so, um, so- He was in hospital. World he was War in ended. hospital. It gets a bit better. He's never that fit though, he's one of these blokes who was always <laughs> ill. Uh, that was on something like 30 tablets a day or something. Comes out of there, uh, joins some other army. Um, God, you know, I knew it all this morning. I can see it running to ground. <laughs> I just see his face going, I'm, I'm not nailing the fact, am I? And joined a, another army and he was well, <laughs> astonishing. Listen, let's try to help you. So here's a good bit, here's a good bit, I remember this bit. He thought that war to men, right, was like childbirth is to women. That's how important he thought he was. Oh, right. Right. So it's like, um, you know, you, you fight for nine months and at the end of it, you own something, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, he, he goes on and all that. He's in Berlin. Yeah. And, uh, he's, he's you know, he's, he's, uh, he's fighting his way through, like, you know, trying to take over countries and that. And he does, uh, does he do Berlin? 
Does he oh, wait a minute. Is he, is he, is he, uh, <laughs> is he Chancellor yet? Um, what year is it? So, 35? So let's what, where skip, are you? let's skip the kind of climb to power then. He's now, he's now, he's now the dictator of Germany. Right, he's in yeah. charge, yeah. And this is when, you know, he gets his own back on the Jewish people and that, and he's, he's, uh, he's got his own little armies, uh, and he's setting fire to Jewish businesses and, and all this. And, uh, anyway, cut a long story short, he, uh... Please do. He, uh, when he came to, like, f fighting Britain... Yeah. Came a bit sort of uns unstuck. Yeah. Right? Started fighting Not back. so easy, is it, this world domination, Adolf? Britain was there. France was helping out. Yeah. Americans were helping out. Yeah. So well, he thought, oh, God. So a bit he goes, late, but yeah, go he, go he goes into a bunker in Berlin. Yeah. And it's all kicking off. Yeah. And apparently, like, Germany sort of surrenders. Yeah. So it's all over, forget it, we can't beat you. He was really annoyed with this, and he thought, oh, I can't, I can't show me face around here. <laughs> so he, uh... He, because <laughs> it would be embarrassing. He's, he's with his missus, who nobody knew was his wife, right. Eva, in this bunker. Yeah. And, um, so, uh, so he said, oh, I've had enough of this. He shoots himself. Yeah. <laughs> she poisons herself. And the chauffeur buries him or something, or burns him. Right. And, uh, in all the time he was in charge, 50 million people died. So that's 1918 to 1945. Yeah. Uh, between... It felt like that. Between, <laughs> between Travis and the Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers. Next right. week. That's fantastic. That's remarkable. Yeah. It, I, I have to say that you, you, you sort of lost your grasp somewhere along the line, because you started off confidently, but... You yeah, lost I've, your been, I've had a really busy week, and last night I was like whizzing through it. Sure. And then this morning, I woke up, and, you know, Suzanne had been away for about three days, right? Yeah. I, I, I hardly spoke to her. She's been busy, I've been busy. First thing to say when I wake up, oh, just ask me some stuff on Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you are romantic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's how stressful it's getting. But I knew it all this morning, honestly. No, but that's, that's fine. I think you've summed up the, you know, you've done that. Yeah, right, just, just for a bit of balance, um, I've got your next week's, um, homework. It's the same, same series, there's little books, there's tiny little books, just three inches long by two inches wide. Crammed Win with so much information though. Winston Churchill. There you go. You'll enjoy that. Yeah? I, I'm getting a bit bored now though. <laughs> this is what happened in school. Think of the listeners. Did really well in infants. Once got to secondary, lost interest. Was it the breakup? Between you and <laughs> Harris. And Zoe. The, 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 I'm the, wondering if, yeah, you've spiralled into something there. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's like all these other, you know, these men, these men of history, they always had sort of things happen in their early childhood, didn't they? Maybe yeah. yours is the Zoe Harris, um, dress yeah. incident. Well, let's just refer to it as the Zoe incident. Yeah. From now on. Yeah. yeah. Winston Churchill, the better left out in the Hitler story, Hitler was scared of this man. Yeah. And I can tell you something else about Winston Churchill. Go on. Um, he said he can remember being in the womb, <laughs> and he was born in a public toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Flat record. PJ Harvey, this is Love, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl. Um, Carl called me in the week, Steve. I know, yes. I know we sort of ban each other from speaking to him. What, you seem to have just disobeyed that rule I, I can't believe it. I just can't resist it, but, um, he said, uh, oh, just saw a programme. I said, what's that big balloon that blew up? And the newsreader was going all mental. And I went, is that the, the Hindenburg? He went, yeah. Oh, I said, it was a, a big Zeppelin. He went, yeah. He went, what happened? I said, I said, it was helium, wasn't it? And I went, yeah. So it was a big, just a huge Zeppelin full of helium. And what caused us, I don't know, it could be a spark or anything, but of course it just goes, because it's helium so flammable. And he went, now they didn't show this in the documentary, but did all their voices go funny? <laughs> And I went, what? He went, well, no, even if you take a little bit of a little balloon of helium, your voice goes funny. So if that was, like, millions of gallons of it, and it blew up in the air, and you were, and it was in the atmosphere, you'd be carrying, you'd be talking like Donald Duck, he went. So, imagine that. God. And, I, and but I, what I liked about it, I said, this wasn't in the documentary. No. No, it was an oversight. Maybe just time was against him, they didn't have time to explain Just it like that, but that book about Hitler didn't have his one ball incident. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's annoyed me, that. What? What is? The old Hitler book. Why? Just, just because I, I knew it all. Do you know what I mean? I was cycling in today. I was like, yeah, yeah, going through it all again. Yeah. Had it all in my head. But that's why you should know something as opposed to just cram and have a piece of trivia that's, that's pre precariously sort of teetering on the edge. But what I don't understand you know what I mean? It's, it's, you, it's, it's... Well, you're not interested by it. That's it's what I mean. It's one of the most you know, fascinating things. I you am, you but... know about things you're interested in, you never forget them, do you? You know? Yeah, I, I was a bit interested in it, but 
like I say, I mean, I'm cramming all this in, in into a, a normal week. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. You go on and, you know, you watch telly and that in the week, you've got loads of leisurely time. I'm sort of using the only little bit of rest time I have to learn, as well as try to do all my other stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he texted me yesterday about Hitler. He went, he went, stop making me read this heavy shit. He said, I've seen in the back of this book, there's one on Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it is, it is interesting, but not when you have to read it, do you know what I mean? Right. It's, it's but do you yeah. think you'd have read time. it in your leisure time? To be honest? No, you wouldn't have, no, would you? I wouldn't, no. no he's what not do you do in your leisure time? Um, I like, you know, going f out for food and that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Foraging? What do you mean going out yeah. for food? Go they can have a little yeah. hole and go, <laughs> go hunting. Mm. Yeah. This is Carl. He's hungry. He knows he has to get to the greasy spoon by 11. Wow. 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 Many of he... Carl's close friends have never made it across this road. <laughs> there was a zebra crossing installed just for the safety of Carl. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Uh, can I have a bacon body into- Carl is enjoying his- Wow. <laughs> but he has to get back. <laughs> his girlfriend's asked for one as well. <laughs> She's home with the PlayStation too. <laughs> wow. Oh. Beep. <laughs> All right, Beep. Rick. It was David Bowie impressions earlier. Now it's just a selection of crazy sound effects like that guy you in said Police you Academy. Some. You said you wanted some. He hasn't got time to make them up. He's reading about Hitler. You heard him. Do a machine we, gun or a helicopter. We've, we've, we've got to do all our own sound effects. <laughs> oh. oh. So do you, want a, do you want a week off? Do you not want to learn about Winston Churchill? Why don't you read it if you want to, and just, you know, if you, if you get ex interested, then read on. I think that's- Cause that's what I did with school, and it didn't work. <laughs> no, you decided you didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So- But hasn't that, hasn't that taught you something? <laughs> Can't you just do it like a TV series? It doesn't go on forever. We've done three weeks. Give it a rest now for the si for like the summer. Yeah, cause most series last for three weeks. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. Okay. What, what's your favourite subject in the world? What's your favourite thing in the world? Um, I would have said, um, what, at school, like? No, just, just in, 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 in life. life. What's, what are you interested in? Like, I like little interesting bits, like, <laughs> um... <laughs> Sentences. Atlantic Ocean. It's got 17 quadri quadrillion gallons of water in it. Right. Well, that's that's interesting. Without having to read a book. And stuff. Why is that interesting, though? What what are you basing that on? What, what when you when you think of seventeen quadrillion? It's a lot, what, isn't it? What are you imagining? Just like a big wave. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> how much water. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what's your subject then? <laughs> I don't know. No, it's just that that. What was it? What's your favourite subject? You gave me a fact <laughs> that is so. No, but that, this, that sort of thing. Like I said to you before, you were talking about monkeys. And I said, do you know that if you give a monkey a childbirth tablet, it works on it the same way because it's, it's kitted out the same way. Could I just say something? We weren't talking about monkeys. What were we talking about then? You no, know, we were talking about something and you went, if you give a monkey a childbirth but it works. That's what you said. No, we were talking about monkeys. We were, we were talking about sneezing. Yeah. Yeah, and you went, if you give a monkey childbirth pills, it works. That's, that's, that's. Well, we're yeah, well, we're talking about interesting things about sneezing, <laughs> and I remembered an interesting fact about monkeys. <laughs> so. <laughs> anyway, um, half past two, brilliant. Um, oh. what did happen to that bloke who used to make the same effects in Police Academy? I don't know. He was brilliant, wasn't he? Do you remember him? I don't remember was him. Was he called Hightower? Yeah, he was good. Yeah? If yeah. anyone knows, give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> girls and boys. Um, you've embarrassed yourself then, Gervais. What? Well, we've had a number of calls and emails. Yeah. Pointing out that the Hindenburg disaster was not because the ze Zeppelin was filled with helium. Hydrogen. But filled with hydrogen. Right, okay. Well, I thought about that when he told me in the well, week. yeah, I, but, but I assumed he must have got that off from the do documentary. So it just, it just went up. So that's, that's probably why the, the voices didn't go That funny. was probably why it didn't feature in the documentary. Yeah. But it seems to me we should have thought of that. I mean, like, it's school fates and stuff where they're like filling little balloons with helium. Yeah. You know, there'd be all kinds of horror stories if they were just, you know, just blowing up, you know, left, right and centre. I don't think you can just blow helium up like that, can you? What? Isn't that the point? What well, I'm mean? saying is it's not, it's, it can't be as potentially lethal as hydrogen, helium. What? Hydrogen isn't as bad as helium? No, helium's not as bad as hydrogen. I don't know what you're saying, because that, that Hindenburg was hydrogen. Yeah, and I'm saying, why did we think it was helium? That's crazy. You go to fates, school fates and stuff with like little kids, and they're filling up little balloons with helium. 
they wouldn't have big canisters of helium, you know, at a, a charity event or a, you know, a small kind of bring and buy sale if it was deadly. Yeah, but it's not as big, I mean, when you buy those balloons at a fair, it's not as big as that, uh, that, that big But presumably balloon. it's still flammable, is it? But it wasn't, it wasn't the fact how dangerous the, the rare gas was or the, uh, it was the fact that, um, it was made of this thing that caught fire and just went, there was nothing, a hole in it would have been as bad. It just, it just burnt quickly and fell to the ground because the hydrogen or helium escaped. It wasn't, it was irrelevant that, what, what the gas was, wasn't it? I thought it was, there was supposed to be some kind of explosion. Well, I don't know what it was, but the point is because the outer thing was so thin, right, the, the gas inside escaped and it fell to the so ground. So it just fell to the ground like one of the, like when you've popped a balloon? Mm -hmm. Well, not, not, not quite. It didn't quite. sort of go <laughs> It didn't like flap all over no. the place and make a zany noise. But I'll tell you what, because when I was looking on the internet in the week for it, I was like trying to get a bit more info on it. Guess how many balloons it would take, <laughs> helium balloons, to lift a human up? <laughs> go on. 6,000. Shall we do it? Sure. Brilliant. Next week, that's got to be a challenge. Can we, can we, is, if, is there a sort of balloon company or, or, or some sort of, you know, uh, party company that are willing to sponsor us to lift Carl <laughs> into the air right. with helium balloons? Ten feet off the ground, where we're tethering him down, right? Is there someone willing to pay for 6,000 balloons to try and lift We can maybe up? get some kind of company to sponsor it. I'm thinking like Electrolux, if they're going to sponsor puddings. If they're going to sponsor puddings, uh, you know, and, uh, 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 celebrities, Russ Abbott, they will sponsor Carl being lift. Heat magazine, Heat magazine, come on. They're big selling, very successful magazine there, and they know about Carl because they've mentioned him. Heat magazine, can we have a heat balloon? Yeah? Oh, six thousand's an awful into lot. Into the Rick. air, six. Th yeah, it's the heat. Six thousand, Carl challenge. Lift Carl ten feet into the air. Yeah. Come on. What about if it was Carl and Doctor Fox? We could get two different balloons. I think we need a lot more than six thousand. A lot more for Fox, to, isn't it? Mix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes. I just explain what I'm laughing at. Right? We just had a call. Um, from someone saying his company would sponsor Carl, right, to be raised by all these balloons if he could have a walk on part in the office. And, uh, uh, we immediately went, oh, we're worried about that sort of thing. You can't really promise that artistically. You know? And I was worried about the legality of it as well. How can you promise someone that for personal gain that's a private, and all that sort of stuff, right? And I went, oh, I don't know. In any way, put the phone down to him, and Carl went. <laughs> I love the fact you're more effing worried about that than me being raised 30 feet in the effing air. <laughs> 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 you started getting scared, did you? Are you worried about it? Well, you're quite excited about the idea of the challenge, aren't you? I like the idea, but I want, like... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like the idea, Carl? Oh, what if it went all wrong and we're there going, oh, the humanity of it. I think we need Carl, to get... Carl, he's just, he's just... <laughs> just... And the rope would pull out my trousers <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, it's definitely got to be Dr. Fox if that's going to happen. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, we've got to do this. So, hang on, but let's just think about the, because wait a minute, bef I mean, we say this, but we'd have to get all kinds of health and safety people involved. No, we, no, we wouldn't. Of course we can't just start <laughs> raising you in the air. No, you're allowed to do it on private land, aren't you? Look, what happened to the Hindenburg? No, but that was, there was, I was <laughs> just saying, there was lots of people died. <laughs> Listen, look, all we do is we get, all, we get someone right. But what if, what if he, go, he gets loose and he just floats off into the air? <laughs> no, we never, and he meets his magpie that he lost. He yeah, used to I peck his grifter. <laughs> So, wait, wait, sorry, wait, sorry, wait, sorry. Listen, we've got to do this. No, but Please. Just have a minute. Let's no. just stop and think about it. It's right. 60,000 balloons. balloons. Look, no, no, it's, it's not. It's 6,000. 6, 6, but 6,000 balloons? That's a lot of balloons. No, it's not. No, no, oh, it's don't not. Be silly. For 6, sponsorship, 000. people pay for. Uh, no, listen, it's worth it. There must be a company out there that are paying for this just so we can film yeah, it. Well, is there not an easier way of <laughs> just getting one big balloon? Then <laughs> the challenge is no, no challenge. There. No, it's yeah, got to be. It's got our people coming up and hooking balloons. It'd be like Buckaroo. And the person who puts the balloon that actually raises him 10 feet wins a prize or something. So hang no. on, so what we've got, we've got each person with like oh. 500 balloons. Yeah. That's mad. You, can you can imagine how many balloons that is? That's ludicrous. 6,000. Yeah. That's an awful lot of balloons. I don't know, you'd, what, we'd, there must be someone that, that, that could do this. Oh look, people have walked on the moon for Christ's sake. We can raise Carl Pilkington with some balloons. Yes, but they had a NASA budget. We've got XFM behind us. Yeah, but balloons, <laughs> yeah. balloons are cheap. You can get about a pack of 25 for about 150. <laughs> right, fine. <laughs> no, True. Yeah, the helium though, Carl. You can't just like attach yourself to a pack of balloons. No, but... Oh. What, you think we blow them all up? 
With helium. Right. Oh. Off you go. But then we can do something with the balloons, can't we? Like, release them afterwards. Oh, yeah. we'll release them back <laughs> into the wild. <laughs> Brilliant. As a sign of peace. <laughs> <laughs> Fly, my pretty fly, Listen, be free. I am so excited. I have not been so excited about and, and when I thought that Robin Ince was going to stay in my cupboard for a thousand pounds. Look, we've got to, we've got to do 6, this. Six thousand balloons. I don't think it's going to happen. That's an awful lot of balloons, and I just don't oh. think, I don't see how we can tether them all to Carl. He's a small man. No, but because you have like different lengths, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Carl knows. Can you think about the logistics of this? Oh, someone must know. There must be a couple of, there's a bloke willing to do it. I, I know he doesn't know the technology of it, he's willing to sort of stand by. And, and so a company just on, has we, access to helium like that. Then we can do this, come on. London. Well, someone's done Londoners. It, it was on the internet already, so someone obviously has done it. Yeah. So they didn't say, oh, we can't get all of the balloons. No, they probably worked it out, didn't they? Okay, Carl, you're oh. more excited about this than anything else, about your education, about your exam well, results. You're so exciting. exciting. And, and we'll have a little rope, we'll like fly in a little kite, a little Carl. we uh, let's go fly. Carl, what will you wear, like a one-piece jumpsuit? Yeah, it'd be lovely. With sponsorship all over it? Oh, it'd be yeah. great. You look like Jackie Stewart, and just as you go up your little face, oh my god, I'm not gonna sleep until this is done. This is the most exciting thing ever. Only ten feet. Ten feet, yeah, and we we're need some, We'd need some kind of rope to sort of tether you to the ground. Yeah. We don't want you sort of flying <laughs> this off. This is gonna be great. And you'd have a little crash helmet and everything, and little deedy boppers on the crash helmet, like yeah. it's a little flying ant. Definitely, definitely. We give him a little, oh my god, can we give you an outfit like little wings and everything? Can we oh. paint your face with like children's no, paint? I'm not yeah. Doing all that. Why? Oh, because no, no, no. that'll be silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, Carl, do this. Do it. We do it for charity. We do it for charity. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, this is. We'll do it for brilliant. children in need. Please, just phone in if you've got if you can help us lift Carl up thirty feet. Let's say thirty. I think feet. it has to be a decent. Yeah, yeah. It has to be a decent. Well, height. is there a world record? Because we want to break that. If we're yeah, we want to break that. What is the world record for raising a man by balloons? Yeah. Okay, oh. so listen, let's just, let's just finalise details oh. here. We've got, uh, I'm so excited. Email address, ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. What's the number? The What's the number? The number, Carl? 08700 800 1234. Lift Carl. Lift Carl. 08700 800 1234. Sponsored by Heat Magazine. And you, or maybe like. even if you've just got an idea about how we might be able to organise it, how we might be able to get it done, if you've got contacts, anything, just get in touch, give us some information. Oh, oh, that'd be great. I'm gonna play a Beatles track for song for the. For the lovers, oh man, well. it's uh, it's off the Help album, and it's um, you've got to hide your love away. Oh, just think of his little face as he goes. Oh. Can you tell him yeah. Well, XFM, we're nearly the end of the show. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. We've enjoyed company, Carl. We're going to try and get Carl in the air. Anyone that can help us, take him up with helium balloons. Um, our friend Johnny Mango called again. And uh, apparently the record is eleven thousand feet. Carl is getting a little bit nervous. Yeah, the, the world record is eleven thousand six hundred and thirty-one feet raised by hot air balloons. Yeah. How, how tall is uh, Canary Wharf? <laughs> it's eleven thousand six hundred thirty-one feet. Exactly. What's I don't know, Carl. Is it how much higher? It's a long way. A lot, a, a more. Yeah, I'm not doing a lot because I'm like six foot something. Yeah, think of that. Just, just look at Steve. All right. Yeah. But you can change a record. You could say, well, the sort of balloons are the one with, with Mickey Mouse on it or something. Yeah, can I just say, can I just say something? That man did 11,000 feet, but he wasn't naked. <laughs> All right? Come on, Carl. Do you be the- your 30 feet will be the world record for naked ballooning. Yeah? Mm. Think about it. All right, it's for charity. Well, thank you for listening, everyone. We are going to raise Carl. We are going to raise Carl. And after, after uh, Carl said, and just to think, my teacher said I'd never be a high flyer. So this is your chance, Carl, to shine, to fly. Steve. It'll be brilliant. Uh, this is a final song for the ladies. Spell and Sebastian, we've not heard uh, them for oh. a while. This is from, uh, it's actually a B-side or a triple side or whatever you call it. Um, track three on a single called Jonathan David. This is the beautiful The Loneliness of the Middle Distance Runner. Play Goodbye. Carl.